and welcome to the Old Man Orange Podcast. I'm Spencer Scott Holmes. I'm Ryan Dunnigan. And I'm Nora. Back again as our special guest, as always, but it's been probably a while, I guess. Yeah, about a month. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I guess, like, as far as episodes, I think it's been longer than it is as far as time. Yeah. yeah. But, um... We were, like, we were bitching about Hot Topic and, uh, whatnot. Yeah. yeah. I think that might have been even farther ago than that. Really? Oh, that, wow. that was one, like, the earlier ones, seems like. I, I'm gonna guess, at least. I don't know. Your other friend was there, too. Oh, yeah, Marley. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, Marley. God yeah. knows what we were talking about then. Yeah. Well, I finally saw Fritz the Cat. Now, Nora, have you ever seen this movie called Fritz the Cat? Uh, no, I've never even heard of this. <laughs> this is... A lot of animated dick, but they're like Disney animals. It, it's 1970. It's the so original the X-rated cartoon Ooh. movie. Is it Japanese? No. no. Oh. It's American. There's no tentacles oh. or nothing it's like Jewish. that. <laughs> it's Jewish. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> And made by, very 60s. And yeah, it's made by this guy called Ralph Bakshi. Now, here's a movie. Do you remember the old Lord of the Rings cartoon movie? Not The Hobbit, but yes. the Lord of the Rings one. Yes, He made that Lord of the Rings one. Okay, yeah, because that was like the first and like halfway through the second as far as... Yeah, it, if it, you were to relate it, it to the real live action movies, it was like the first and like half the second you one. You know, I actually just watched that cartoon one again because I haven't seen it since I was probably like five, renting it from like video scene. Yeah. So I rewatched that one again and it goes almost to like the end of like Two Towers. I mean, it, it does like... It, they said like it does like half the two towers. To me, it felt like maybe I haven't watched two towers in a while. I'm like, was it the, was it like the main end part? Kind of like when they were on the two tower part. Mm-hmm. I mean, I know there's some stuff that goes on a little bit afterwards, but wasn't that the generally the climax of the movie? Or maybe I was totally wrong. Is that the middle of the movie? I, think I, I haven't watched the, Lord of the Rings in so. Long, I was gonna say it's been so long yet. since I've seen the two towers. You know, I really I, every once in a while, I've, like for the last about two, probably three years, but I keep going like I'm gonna sit down and watch all Lord of the Rings movies again. Just gonna sit down and watch them. You know, I, I might appreciate them a little bit because there was a time I was like, I really liked them when I was when they first came out. Then I was like, you know, these movies are really long. But yeah. now I feel like I can come back to them. And go, maybe I'll just like accept the longness and maybe enjoy it again. I like how long they like. I like them, and I think they're good movies. But you're right, they're long. And I it's mean, like, like when you, you want to sit you down, got shit to do. Yeah, and it's like when you go, oh yeah, I want to take a day to watch Lord of the Rings, and then you start adding it up. You're like, okay, so that's 18 hours out of my day that I should probably set aside for this. E- Not including the fact that I'm probably gonna fall asleep and take a nap and have to rewind in spots and want to get food and bathroom break. You're looking at like a day and a half of TV. <laughs> there are some places that actually, when Return of the King was coming out, they're going to do this thing where it's like... Play all three of them. They're going to play all three of them. I believe they did it with... I mean, we didn't... We, actually, they did that with Batman Begins at our, with the Dark Knight with the, the Dark Knight Rises at Arthur. Yeah, they did. They yeah. Did, but I literally... I was like, well, I just watched Batman Begins and Dark Knight like three days before. <laughs> but I saw just that. Just before I came into the theater anyways. So. Beat them to it. Yeah, so I was like, oh, I don't care to go into the theater. I mean, that'd be cool. The only thing about that, though, it's like, this seems like a long time. Like, nine hours of movies, like... That's yeah. a lot of movie. I don't know. Yeah, even if, like, you're doing it at your own house, it's quite a long time. Like, I, I, like to, I like to split it up. I like to do, like, I watch one movie, you know, tonight, the next night I watch the next one, and I watch the third one, like, the next night. Yeah. Even as a child, like, you know what? I'm going to go to the Star Wars marathon. I'm going to watch all three of the original trilogy Star Wars. And then I get, like, a quarter way done with Empire Strikes Back. Like, I got things to do. <laughs> Well, it's just, it's just too I got, much I got eight year old things to do right now. It's too much to do in one sitting. I could trilogy. I think I could do the Star Wars trilogy. Mm-hmm. Well, that oh. one's not actually not nearly yeah, as long. Yeah, I was gonna say that because like that one's not as long as the Lord of the Rings. I could the originals. I could not do all three of the new ones. New fangled ones. Yeah, the episodes one, two, threes. No, but the original three, the original trilogy. Yeah, I could do all those in a day. I've done that one. No, I, I think I've done that one. That too. That one's fun. But Lord of the Rings. I think the problem with Lord of the Rings is Lord of the Rings has so many spots that are just. Boo. Like, there's nothing going on. They're literally walking. Just like, it's some, like, I can't carry the ring no more. Yeah. Just, it, you know, a lot of that. You just hit certain points where it's, it's just so, nothing's going on. That it's like, yeah, that might only be 45 minutes. But when you're watching that movie, you're like, oh my god, that feels, it feels like it's a freaking hour and a half. Whereas, like, Star Wars, you kind of had a consistent flow of everything. You didn't yeah. have, like, these dull moments. You did randomly, like, a couple times. But for the most part, it was... You always have something going there's on. There's something going on. Whereas, like, Lord of the Rings, there's plenty of times where you hit points where you're like, okay, everybody's just walking. A lot of Like, walk- everybody's walking. Well, in that Ralph Bakshi one, though, I will say, though, the upside that one, it's, it's like a little, it's like two hours and ten minutes for pretty much the first two books, you can almost say. Yeah. That one really just gets to the point. It, no yeah, bullshit that, yeah, around. Yeah, that one really cuts out the bullshit. <laughs> I have never seen the animated Lord of the Rings. I've seen The Hobbit, but not the animated Lord of the Rings. Yeah, well, what happened to is that there's, there's like, remember The Hobbit one, too? Yeah, I was going say, because my grandmother got my brother when he was, like, 18 years old, the animated version of The Lord of the Rings, because she thought it was the real one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I felt so bad for him. <laughs> He's like, oh, thanks, Grandma. <laughs> I think he still has it. Well, that animated one, like, I will say The Lord of the Rings animated one, it's one of those kind of movies... 
You couldn't give it to a kid nowadays and be like, hey, you like Lord of the Rings here? You like this? Because they might be like, well, it's okay. You really have to respect animation if they like that one. Yeah. yeah. Or if you grew up watching that one, I could see it making a big impact. Well, that like, one how... wasn't very kiddie, was it? The Hobbit was, I mean... The, the Hobbit, Hobbit was very kiddie. This, ho- this one was made Hobbit like a was, PG yeah, movie. Yeah, the Hobbit, I think, was kiddier than the Yeah, because the, Ho- the Hobbit Rings. had very, like, woo kind of looking characters. Yeah. yeah. They and made they that sang. one They're really round and all that. Yeah. yeah a little bit yeah. more bubbly. <laughs> the bubbly characters. Did the Hobbit go to theaters? I know this one did. Yeah, all the Ralph Bakshi ones. Did. I don't think the Hob- I don't know if the Hobbit one did. It probably did because it's old enough to be. I don't. I, don't I think know. it's a '70s movie. I don't. Because what else could they really do with it? Just like show it on TV. Yeah, well, yeah, that's yeah. the only thing. Because it's kind of still. I mean, VHS came out in like the late '60s, but mm-hmm. nobody owned a VHS player until about the '80s. Yeah. yeah. And we're kind of the last generation that can get away with crap animation, and we're totally fine with it. <laughs> well, I don't know. We're like, the, know, la- no, we're like the last generation like, the- that looks at hand-drawn cartoons and go, "That's talent." Well, even though the strange enough, the hand drawn cartoons still have like they still outweigh like just I mean like I know there's CG, but I mean let's just go to straight animation, this 2D stuff. The hand drawn still is the one that still outweighs as like the pinnacle of animation. Yeah. Even with computers, because you watch a lot of stuff like flip through channels like on Cartoon Network nowadays. You watch some of the animation, you're like Jesus Christ, that took absolutely no effort. Yeah, it's example, all computer. Example, you get a lot of like adults. I don't, I can't say so much for like Cartoon Network, but Adult Swim shows. I remember they yeah. had some shows. They were almost kind of like throwing in your face and rubbing in your face how little effort it took. Do you guys remember the show? I only seen like two or three episodes of it. Ten Ounce Mouse. No, no. I don't think I ever saw. There was the, it was the show. It was the most weirdest, most random show ever, and often it was just like a blank background and if they did have a background it would maybe just be a sloppily thrown in picture or maybe just kind of like pencil drawn like you know just like a door back there maybe a a lot of flowers and they would almost be kind of like it's almost kind of it's so simple it's hard to explain like in like like your guys' drawings you guys used to do in high school with the spoon and the banana our stuff this is is kind of what this is sounding like to me like the spoon and the banana i never understood you guys in the spoon and the banana i I wasn't i wasn't part of spoon i I, I had no idea what that was all about okay well because you guys hung out with rj i think that's the only reason why i made it's like i met john bumgarner really like the spoon and banana yeah john was the other one brett and cool there was there was a few that like in your guys' little group this this was like all right was it like that kind of animation this was it's like it's literally um it's almost kind of like moving. It's combining Photoshop with different parts of Adobe, like like Adobe, like uh, pre- like Premiere, because you're really just kind of, you're really just kind of like, um, you know, the thing where you can almost like take a title and make the title move, but sometimes input a image instead. Mm-hmm. It was literally kind of like that. Oh, okay. And maybe you know they might have like it, it, was, it makes our stuff look like fucking Ralph Bakshi. That's what it looks like. <laughs> See, the, the shows that take very little effort to make, but are usually interesting to me, are like... It, they used to have one called Kablam when we were kids. I remember Kablam. And the adult version of it is Robot Chicken. Yeah. yeah. I've come to the daunting realization of this, that Robot Chicken is basically us keeping Kablam alive for our generation. Because when we were kids, Kablam, it was like, there was no effort to make those shows. Mm-hmm. You grabbed Barbie and Ken off the shelf and you made them talk. But it was the elegance in which they did it. Just like mm-hmm. then, all of a sudden, you have Adult Swim and what's his what's his little name? Seth Green. Yeah, that's the short Seth one. Seth Green. Yeah. Yeah, he's the mm-hmm. short one. He does Robot Chicken, and you can tell it's him whenever he talks. But and yeah, it's like it's Barbies, and it's oh yeah, that, that's not effort. You know, you're not drawing, and they're just using dolls. It's like yeah, but the stories that those guys come up with, even for a 10 second bit, are sometimes better than some of the animation. Well, the thing that makes it that Robot Chicken still is it's because it's got um. The claymation stuff. Yeah, because they, they do claymation and they do, like, the Barbies. The action figure stuff, yeah. Yeah, action figures, that's the proper term. Well, there's another show, it's kind of like a newer Kablam, it's on, uh, because Kablam was, that was what, Kablam Nickelodeon? was, yeah, yeah Kablam was Nickelodeon. was Nickelodeon, that was awesome, because I remember the, the Justice Forces on that. Well, I guess this isn't so much Kablam, but there, this is, it's sort of like it, where it's kind of like, I guess they take, they're, it's kind of weird, because now, I, I see these, there's this something, what's it called, it's called the Woohoo Show, or something, it's something around those lines. And but here's the real kicker for it: the character hosting it. I thought I'm kind of glad to see this guy is still sort of getting work. It's Brack and Zorak. Oh, that's bad. Brack and Zorak hosted. What they do is are they actually Brack and Zorak or just the voices of Brack and Zorak? They're Brack and Zorak, and it's one. Of the, you remember Brack and Zorak? No, from Space, Space Ghost. Oh, Space Ghost. Okay, Ghost. That's they, really come, they, they come from the original Space Ghost, and then. Space and they're Ghost, same, Ghost, using Ghost. those same animations. They have not altered it at all. It's it's because they always have the animation of Brack. He had his hands on the table, leaning forward with his mouth moving, or his arms, arms crossed. 
Zorak always kind of like hunched, hunched over. Yeah, was maybe out. he was playing. Maybe they might like Photoshop a video game controller on his hand. That's what Zorak would always do. And they're still using. That's probably much. still even like that's still. But like what it was stuff. is, but what it was though is, um, they would take. This made me feel so much older. Like my oldest nephew. There was a couple of shows he watched on Nickelodeon or whatever, or uh, Cartoon Network, I guess in this case, and. Now, I guess these are sort of considered retro shows because they don't get a full, like, time slot anymore. So now they're just like, okay, take a segment from this show, plop it on here, and it'll be like Brack and Zorak. Hey, guys! Ah, Brack, what do you want? We're going to watch some cartoons today! You know, because Brack was just kind of like, hey, kids, retards are, retards are totally cool. You yeah. know? It was kind of like... Well, it's like a Space of Coast to Coast was one of the original kind of like, it was on Cartoon Network, it was probably Cartoon Network's original adult show. I, I was like, because I used to stay up late nights. Because it was TV 14, with, yeah. Yeah, and I used to stay up late nights with Carol and to watch it because she was like one of like maybe five friends I had growing up that had Cartoon Network because if you lived in the top of Ponderosa Hills you get Cartoon Network. Well, here's the thing. If you had satellite, you had Cartoon Network. Yeah, if you, you had could... cable, you had Nickelodeon. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Let me just say what the theme song to this show is. It's it's going to sound so retarded It's but it's it's almost just kind of like catchy as hell. It's like, imagine Brack singing the Brack voice. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. Woo! Hello, everybody. Hello. And like words popping up as if they were written in crayon <laughs> or going across. Awesome. So it's kind of, kids love retarded people. It's, it's funny because like when you watch like the original Space Ghost show, like Brack is this like evil. serious evil like space alien guy who's like, I will take over the planets now. That wasn't yeah. Space Ghost the one they eventually turned into Frisky Dingo? No. no or Frisky was Frisky Dingo different? It's its own thing. Uh, okay, Frisky Dingo, because Frisky Dingo was the guy who's like, I don't know, I don't know what Frisky he was. Frisky Dingo turned into He's like all chair. white. Frisky Dingo? Oh, yeah. oh Killface. Killface. Hey, okay. He, was... he looks like he could fight Space Ghost. He looks like a Space Ghost villain, but no, Archer and Frisky Dingo, they're both their own things. They're not connected, but the guys who did... Oh, and before that, they did Sea Lab. That makes sense on why I like Frisky Dingo, then, if that's the guy who did Archer. <laughs> they did. Yeah. They, they, those are the guys that did Sea Lab beforehand. Sea Lab 2021, not Sea Lab 2020. That's, I get them confused. That's Sea Lab 2021. But if I had to guess, since it's kind of like the early stages of Adult Swim, I'm guessing maybe some of those guys that worked on Sea Lab 2021 were on the Brack show and like Space Ghost Coast to Coast and whatnot. They might. Have. I don't know if it's one of those ones where like either people just kind of like shot in this stuff from like their own little studios and mm -hmm. then Cartoon Network just threw it on there, or they really just had this like basement level like animation studio. <laughs> the I think they started of off. Network. I want to say they started off that way and like okay, we got a lot of these you know like kind of a college dropouts and film school dropouts and like, like and this guy's fucking fifteen. <laughs> and drop he dropped out of like grammar school. <laughs> <laughs> and like to drop a lot of acid before they animate. Why don't we just give them a chance? You know, because C Lab Twenty Twenty One. You look back at that show. It was, I mean, before, eventually, eventually, they would bring in, like, okay, fully rendered characters, and they had slight animations. It was still simple, but you, it was, you know, you could see they put a little more work in it. Early on, it was kind of like that Dragon Ball Z abridged thing, where they would just take this already made footage and just voice over and make them say dumb shit. Yeah, you know I, mean, I mean, every once in a while, they'd, like, slap in another photo. It's like, oh, he's got a birthday present or a birthday cake. Yeah, yeah, but then after a while, the show actually became, they were fully animated. And I never saw the show once it became fully animated. I remember watching it before. I have to watch you. Because I, I think it was, like, it was right around the same time Cowboy Bebop came on and, and I don't know what it was but when you're a kid you seem to watch every show that circled around whatever show you watched yeah, yeah. which probably that's why you know TV producers are like that's why we put shows like that around <laughs> Yeah. Have you guys seen the show Homemade Videos or Home Videos? Yeah, yeah. that was another one that Home was on Videos, there. Videos, it's on. They they have it on Cartoon Network during Adult Swim. I love that one. That one, yeah, that's actually that the was, guy. That's the guy who made Metal Apocalypse. Oh, okay. You wouldn't guess it from looking at it. Same no, thing. that that one cracks me. Up. That's another one that it's like it's beyond third grade like animation in it, but it's all hand drawn animation. Still like hand -drawn. it's yeah, it's an actual hand drawn animation cartoon, which I miss. Well, I kinda, here's I kinda, one thing. Going back to the Ralph Bakshi though, like at some point you should check out Fritz the Cat. Before one that it is very '60s. Fritz. It's called Fritz, Fritz the Cat. Fritz the Cat. And it's about like a See, cat yeah. who's like he's in he goes to NYU in New York. Nice. And it's, it's kind of like everybody's 60s. like it's kind of like a, in the sense where like the Disney where like everybody's like an animal creature or whatever, but like ah. almost like real world stuff. Though nice. kind of like out there. And it's kind of making like statements about society, like in the. Uh, Kind of like, you know, about the free love movement, about, man, we're going to bring up the revolution, and kind of like black rights and all that kind of stuff. And it's also kind of bringing in the aspects, there's that whole kind of like, hey man, down with society, down with establishment, but it's kind of going the pros and cons of that at the same time. Yeah, it hits like both of them. Because you see kind of Fritz is kind of a, 
he's sort of like he's kind of like a dumb kind of college kid. That he's like, whoa, man, I gotta. He, he's I got something to say, uh, but I don't know what it is exactly. You know, <laughs> I have something to say. I just don't know how to say it. Exactly. So, got it. And it is one of those movies. Just so you know, there is a lot of just like animal dick it, well, and tits. You, you know, those like, you, I don't I, know I don't after know. seeing The Watchmen and having glowing blue dick in your face well, this for like an hour, two hours, you. you an animation is not that big of a deal. <laughs> this movie's got the intro. Okay, there's just like three guy, like three construction worker guys sitting on top of a like um, a building getting made, and they're just like talking, eating lunch, you know, like classic kind of scene. Oh yeah. And this guy's just going on this rant about like, does he go on a rant like how his like niece is like kind of like a whore, like how she's dressing or whatever? He's nice. talking about like the, she doesn't appreciate shit I'm doing for. Her. Oh, he doesn't appreciate. She's a slut. I only watched it once, but I remember it being. Well, then it like just that. turns, and one of the guys just turns to take a pee off the edge, but just whips his dick out and turns, and like it doesn't nice. like. <laughs> that's just the intro of the movie, so you're like, oh, okay, I already know this is gonna happen. <laughs> All right. But it has that kind of animation, and you still see it to this day of a lot of things too, where like sort of like when somebody falls over, their ass falls out for some reason. Yeah. Why I don't know. I I I I, I never really figured that one out. Like, people just must love like oh like the guy fell over his ass, fella. No one's trying to make a statement about like race in a sense because all the all the bl- black people in it are crows. And like in get... Dumbo. Nice. Yeah, I was gonna say like Dumbo did that same thing. And then they have but Disney like, could get away with that then. Generally, kind of like all the white people are cats, and all the all well, the no, officers. The, the white people kind of like vary because there's like cats and dogs. Usually, it seemed. Well, no, there's there's like tons of different animals in that too. Because then you I got, saw like, there. Oh, I guess there ant eaters and like all kinds of weird. Eater. Yeah, there's a bunch of like. I remember. Oh, that guess that's true. So, no, there. Then you get the, the rabbit. There's the yeah, rabbits. Rabbit. Like yeah, most people were. It was like most everybody was like pretty individual. There's only really like about a couple cats in the entire. And then thing. there's like and then there's so like kind of uh, like like Ducktales as far as characters go. Mm-hmm. Like there, everybody's. An animal. Yeah. But and all the, everybody and all the acts co- like they're human. And all yeah. the cops are pigs. Yeah, all the cops yeah, are Yeah, that's actually a common Disney thing. Mm-hmm. Just like you, you can always tell what movies were made before Disney died. Because mm-hmm. any movie that was made while Disney was alive, any cat that is in it is a villain. Anytime you see a cat in a Disney movie and the cat is not a villain, that movie was made after Disney died because Walt Disney hated cats. Hated cats. Because <laughs> Walt Disney hated cats. That's, maybe Absolutely that's why Fritz is the, maybe why the, the Fritz the cat why that's the main character. Maybe it could have been a statement against it because Ralph Baxi really doesn't like Disney though because he, he feels like he, like he's like Disney was lying to kids. I just want to make movies that weren't lying to kids. And there's yeah. a part in the movie where uh, Fritz goes down, I, think, I believe it's Harlem, he jumps up, he's like, fight against your oppressors, go against them. You hear one guy in the background, get the fuck off my car! You know? <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> he's just going off, yelling, and he, he just gets a riot started. And it actually turns into a very bloody riot with all these animals. Like, goes and like then, way farther than he was thinking. Like, in his mind, you know, a riot, is, it's a nice, fun thing. Yeah. yeah but then it ends up going way worse, and then it gets to the point where you see, like, these jets flying in for Harlem to shoot, <laughs> get ready to bomb it, and you see, like, a silhouette of Mickey and Minnie and Donald waving for American flags. Woo! Kill them all! Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Well, I watched the second Ralph Bakshi movie after that one he did. Uh, Heavy Traffic. Heavy Traffic. Mm-hmm. That one's that one's definitely the weirdest of all these all his movies. I got a movie to talk about after this, but yeah, it, it's like a very this one's like super seventies, but it's just about like some guy who lives at his parents' house or in whatever. And he's like yeah, and he's like an animator, and it, and his, his dad's just kind of like a kind of like a mobster dude. But he looks actually like a proto like Homer Simpson sort of. Really. <laughs> And, like, he, he's Italian, his mom's Jewish, and they hate each other, so they always fight. Oh, of course. He's in a part two where the kid's, like, an animator, so he draws a picture of his mom and dad fighting, and it, it just it shows the animation of his dad whipping his dick out and beating his mom with it. Oh, my <laughs> God. just like, what the fuck? We're gonna be edgy as fuck. <laughs> edgy as fuck. Oh, God. And I remember there's a part, like, the com- I remember that there's a part where, like, in the com- in the commercial. Trailer. In the trailer, yeah. Is it my trailer? Where the mom's reaching for a hammer and had, like, a Jewish star on it or something yeah. like that. Oh, the star it is. His point is, like, that part, too, like, like the husband just punching his wife and she's going through, like, um, like a clothesline and coming back and just keeps punching her as she comes back <laughs> around. <laughs> it's the abuse, but it's funny. <laughs> And there's even like live action segments in that one. And yeah, stuff, he too. That. there's a part where he's like, he's a pinball wizard, and he's a twenty, he's a twenty seven year old virgin, or something like that. Yeah, he's like twenty two or something like that. Oh, okay. And like all his like rockabilly friends are trying to get him laid. The first is like one of the funniest parts. Are like, here's a chick on top of the roof. She's just waiting for you. Go get her. And he goes over and he runs. And he trips and he pushes her. She goes off the edge of the building. Oh god. <laughs> oh, amazing. But yeah, it's one. That, Did that she die? No, she actually like gets caught like in some lines or something. It's New York. There's shit yeah. everywhere. <laughs> New York, yeah. She caught something. Somebody's hanging out their, dr- their clothes to dry. I actually just... Is that all you're going to say on that, or is there more? There's always more. Okay. <laughs> Unless you really want to say something. 
Well, I actually... You just want to shoehorn yourself Well, oh, just go ahead. Just go ahead. Finish. Yeah, finish just, up. Okay. I guess it's lost its place now. Well, we love, we've had a lot of Ralph Bakshi talk over the last few podcasts, but um, I actually just saw something really weird a little bit ago. It's called John Dies at the End. Mm-hmm. Let's go. Does that, John die at the end? I, I have to say, in this, a sense, he that does. is one of the most yeah. fucking stupidest titles for a movie. Though. I was gonna say that just totally gave away everything. Well, John's not the main character. Oh, so, but it's kind of like I want to explain best I can. It's kind of like a sci-fi channel original movie, but the writing is actually decent and kind of clever. Because a lot of times you see these sci-fi channel original movies, you can tell, oh, they're just ripping off Raiders of the Lost Ark. Oh, they're just trying to rip off some beef, some other horror movie that came out this year. Or they're ripping off just weird stuff out of somebody's ass, like the giant octopus shark thing that they did. That's a Roger Corman film. I didn't see it, Sharktopus, but yeah. Sharktopus, that's what it was called. I didn't Good see God, it. Good God, but... I remember seeing the preview for that when I was living in the Bay, and I'd watch, because I love Sci-Fi Network, I'm such a nerd, I used to watch <laughs> it all the time, I still do. But I remember seeing the preview for that movie, and I was just like, are you kidding me? Like, no, really? Roger like, what Corbin's acids were you on when you did that? Roger Corman's produced, like, over 400 movies, and he's never, ever lost money on any movie. That's amazing. Yeah. Especially he after knows... I saw, like, the preview for that movie. Well, he's done, those like, really? he's done those style of movies for, you know, 50 years by now, probably. Wow. I have a few of his older movies. I have a movie called Bucket of Blood. Yeah, mm-hmm. and, like, he did Little Shop of Horrors, the original one. Not the musical one, but the original one with Jack oh, Nicholson okay. in it and stuff. See... I, and, I don't, yeah, I've seen that one. Never mind. I've seen both of them. You did, like, the Death Race 2000, which is the original one before they made that remake. Was Stallone in it, actually? Yeah, Stallone's in it. And David Carradine's the main character. No Jason Statham. No Jason Statham. <laughs> Darn it. Not gonna watch it. But this one <laughs> right here. It's the only reason I watched that other Death Race anyways, because he was in it. But this movie, uh, John Dies at the End, pretty much what happens is it, uh... It's this guy telling Philip Seymour Hoffman oh. this story. He Philip Seymour Hoffman, he's one of the best. I love Philip Seymour Hoffman. He's, he's not really a huge part of the movie. He's just kind of the guy. He, Philip Seymour Hoffman's a, a reporter, and, he just tell, or, and he's just telling him his story. Mm-hmm. That's all he's doing. And, or not a reporter. He's more of a journalist. Anyway, so and he, generally what happens is there's this drug they just call soy sauce. And if you take this drug, you can kind of see everything. Mm-hmm. And you know everything. So... If uh, I take this drug, soy sauce... We all know that Seymour Hoffman's already taken this drug. What? No. Before the movie even starts. Not see Philip Seymour oh, Hoffman. Not? No, he, he's not. No. He just, knows every, he just knows everything anyways. It's not Philip... He's just, he's just a reporter. He's just a, he's just a journalist. The main character, who's a white guy named David Wong, is telling him the story. Hey, he's, we have one of those in this county. He owns yeah. an off-road outlet. His so name Brad is... Wong? No, Dave Wong. Dave, Dave Wong, Wong owns really? Dave's Off-Road Outlet. And he's... Brad Wong. Oh, that's from Dinner Live. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I don't know who that is. <laughs> these, people, like, these people I think I know personally, but then I realize they're just fictional characters. Yeah, Brad yeah. Wong, you know him. He's kind of like Bruce Lee. <laughs> uh, <laughs> He's supposed yeah. to be like Jackie Chan, the legend drunk master. Brad Wong? Oh, which one's... Oh, Jan Lee. You're thinking is Jan Lee. The... Jan Lee, yeah. That's, gets closer to Bruce Lee. Yeah. Well, anyway, this guy right here, he's... Uh... He generally, he's telling Philip Seymour Hoffman the story about, it opens up, he's telling him the story, okay, here's what happened last night, and they talk, and they, it shows that they kind of work with uh, supernatural jobs, him and his friend John, and I want to say this, there's a funny part, he's watching TV, he's asleep, it's a phone call, he's out, and his friend says something, I don't remember what it is, but something around the lines of like, he's like, my car is stuck, bring the equipment, he says, that's code for we got a job, the phone rings back in, picks back up, he says like, tonight we kill the president, he says, that's code for bring beer. So nice. <laughs> I guess that, that was, you know, so it has that kind of like humor to it. Cool. And they get there and they have this job. They, they do this like supernatural job and where they deal with like a possessed house and all that. And then he says, well, that was just last night. Let me tell you how it all starts. So what happens is you take this stuff called soy sauce and you see everything. And it's kind of like almost like, I'm not sure if this will sell it for you, Spencer, but it's kind of like Evil Dead meets Doctor Who. Where it's kind of like Doctor, I've never seen Doctor Who. Well, Doctor I was gonna Who, say I have never seen Doctor Who, and apparently the world is obsessed with it right now. Well, yeah, generally I'll, it's been I'll, around I'll some... forever too. Exactly, like it's like yeah, as I say, it's like thirteen or fourteen it's years a, old. It's an old BBC show. It's yeah. it's it's a giant mesh pot of just everything science fiction of just kind of like all right, aliens, time travel, supernatural stuff that usually somehow links into science fiction. Oh, this ghost is really an alien or whatever like ha. that. This John is the end. What? That, that, that's 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 uh that's uh. Jo- Doctor Who, but oh. but John dies at the end. It's almost kind of like the horror version of that mm-hmm. ah. because it kind of links in everything. Okay, ghost, alternate dimensions, time travel, just weird shit like that. And you just kind of see everything and you kind of know everything. And his friend accidentally takes this drug while at a rave, and he mm-hmm. trying to st- like his friend's like, "There's a giant fucking spider in my house." Like, there's no fucking spider. As he walks out, you see there's this giant spider just kind of hanging in the wall. Hey, and then what's he. Going on? 
He, he, he uh, uses seat though. Then he accidentally takes the drug by accident, and then he, they just get kind of sucked like, in. Like whoops! I well, he puts he, he grabs the needles. What the fuck is this? Puts I in, Devin. He puts the needle. I got a story similar to that too. <laughs> anyway, he he puts the needle in his pocket, and later at some point he turns, and the needle stabs into him. Nice. So then he has it, and he can see everything, and he they just get kind of sucked into this advent into this sort of adventure. So yeah. Have you ever heard of the movie SLC Punk? Yeah, I've seen that, that too. Where like he runs through like a sprinkler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not Harry and Bob that does that one. That one is um. No, um, you're thinking of the, it's, it's a kid has all the acid and yeah, he runs he, through the his, sprinklers. Yeah, and yeah he he's running through the sprinklers and it's the sweat and the water combines yeah. and he ends up taking ten hits of acid into one knee. So by the time they find him, he's he has what were called liberty spikes when back in the nineties. It's your hair you strung out uh-huh. to here. It was like the eighties. Yeah, and he he's like bright green hair and he's sitting. On a chair in the in fetal the position like this. And he's looking around. And he just goes, how are you doing that, man? And his best friend walks up to him and he goes, how am I doing what, Sean? And he goes, how are you walking on that water like that, man? <laughs> <laughs> so when I hear that, like, just out of nowhere, something just randomly pokes this guy. Like, that totally reminds me of that. There's that part, though, that he turns around and he looks around. And he's just, he says, uh... Yeah, because he's like this and he's... He, 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 he squats, he looks around, and he's like, so there's no land anywhere? He just squats, looks both ways? No, yeah. I don't think so. So aren't you going to go in the house? He's all like, That's I the would, greatest but... part is, there's a bowl in the house. Satan told my mom oh, into a bowl. bowl. Yeah, <laughs> Satan turned my mom into a bowl. Oh, God. No, that's, that's a pretty good flick. I and love that movie. That was one of my favorite movies. I've never movies. seen any movies that guy's directed, though. Uh, SLC Punk guy or this dude? The SLC Punk. This well, the guy who directed this flick, the same guy who did Bubba Hotep. The John dies at the end. Yeah, oh, that's cool. Yeah, Ooh. and I'll say the movie it's it's based on a book, so they they kind of jammed a lot in there. At the end, I mean, it does. I won't, I won't go as far and say it falls apart. They almost it seems like they kind of jammed too. Falls too apart. I wouldn't say that, but they they jam a little too much in there. But it actually um, it still ends up being a, a, an enjoyable movie. So. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Have you seen Dexter? Have you seen that show? I haven't seen it. Have I saw like the very show? first episode once. Did you know that's based on a book series? Didn't know that. Ah! Did, did, but one thing I've learned though is, is okay, just but you know, books, I mean, nowadays movies aren't based off books as they used to be. Like, I mean, every It's more like old books movie. are being made so people can have movies. Yeah. Or television. I feel, yeah, I feel like people are writing books only to make movies. Like Hunger Games. I swear to God, that came out as a book and it was like two months later it was a movie. Yeah. Like, I feel like nothing is, is a book anymore. At all, but Dexter, I guess, was. It That's was a weird. book series back in like that came out like in the nineties, and it's called Darkly Sleeping or Sweetly Sweetly Dreaming Dexter, and it's the whole show, but it's book form. And I guess they were actually books before they were ever a TV. It was show. like a book series too. Yeah, like huh. it was a full blown book series, and it follows the show, I guess, to a point. But I've never seen the show. I guess the show got like way off. Like now she he has some kind of well, that sister. show's been on for like. Six Six years by now. Yeah, because like now I guess they they've actually hit the point where they're now in seasons that they're making stuff out of their own. They're no longer in the books. Well, yeah, they're you can going to last for so long. So yeah, you said they started writing in the nineties. Maybe they like you know this R.L. Stein guy has the right idea with this goosebumps thing. You know, right? <laughs> yeah, and... man, I have goosebumps everywhere at my parents' house. I'm I pretty sure goosebumps. there's a pretty sure there's a giant box in my parents' basement full of goosebumps. I got, I got like, the, like a... the bed set and like the pillowcase and everything. <laughs> they're gonna try and make a goosebumps movie at some point. I don't know if they still are. I'm guessing. Our generation's gonna be the only one that's gonna get freaked Nobody's out by it. Yeah, it's gonna Probably. be a giant. Well, the thing is, like, is, is about Goosebumps though, is it has it has a lot of really good stories in them though. I mean, you could take those stories and expand them and make something really sweet out of it. Mm-hmm. Just the, one book, even too. Yeah, I'll say the one that always got to me was the um, little dummy. What do you call those? Oh. There's the dummy. The what's his name? What was the yeah. dummy? The but the, uh, there was the dummy. But what was his name? The, yeah, the ventriloquist dummy. That thing always creeped me what out. What was his name? Goosebumps. I forgot. Smiley or laugh? What was it? I can't remember. I, I don't know. remember. That, was, that, that, that was like child's child's escaped play. me. It was like yeah. the PG version of child's play, Jim. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and that thing creeped me out. I remember there was a part in the, one of the episodes where it's like they had like they need like the keys of the car. They had something. And the thing was just sitting at the edge of the table, acting like it was dead. It was the keys were sitting right in front of it, and they were just slowly reaching for it. And as a kid, ever it was a pretty scary show at times. Uh-huh. You know, sometimes it was kind of whatever, but other times it actually did get kind of creepy. The show was actually pretty good, for what I remember. I yeah, remember I know how good it is nowadays. Oh, yeah, this is funny. It's kind of like, are you afraid of the dark? Or I was like going to say, are you afraid of the dark? That one is awesome. I remember at Goosebumps that they turn into like an actual, like you know, they did a little episode on it that had a happy ending to it. That I loved. <laughs> and it was a vampire one about two little kids. They couldn't, like, something was wrong in their house. And it was Halloween. They were locked in their house. They thought their house was haunted. And they found this secret passage. And they found this 
old man who was a vampire that goes chasing them throughout their entire house, and then they find out it's because they are vampires. Uh, and their parents, they they were hiding their grandfather in the basement, <laughs> and he was an old man vampire. I remember watching that Goosebumps, and I was, like, so freaked out until the very end, and they showed these two kids, and they, they were suddenly vampires by the end of it, and they had accepted the fact that this is what their families were, and their families had switched out their bunk beds and put in bunk coffins. <laughs> and, I, and I remember watching that Goosebumps and thinking that was like one of the coolest things I'd ever seen. There's one that had a what? twist that pissed me off. It was like, uh, what was it? There, there's a, uh, whatchamacallit, there's the one, what was the name of the one? It had a giant metal uh, praying mantis on the cover. Which one was oh, that? Oh, that's where the bugs like attack the town? No, it wasn't like where bugs attack the town. It was a theme park. What happened was a couple of kids, there's like, a, I guess in, the, in this fictional universe, there's this um, movie franchise of just horror films and the kid, the, the, the one of the, there's two kids, a boy and a girl. The girl was the main character. Oh, I think I remember this one. Actually. And the dad made th- made uh, made like amusement parks, and he's like, "Well, guess what? I'm I'm doing one based on your favorite uh, horror film franchise, and so you guys can be the first test writers for it." So they go through it, and then uh, as they're yeah, going through it, yeah. it, everything ends up being real. Yeah. Like, oh my god, this is real. You know, there's the one, there's the boy, there's the friend who, who's just like, "Oh, I'm so brave, and I'm actually a pussy," you know, the whole time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then they get to the end. And it ends up being like, oh, they're just robots for this whole, like, they're just robots for this test. It's like, oh, that's, that's bullshit. I gotta Dang it. Dad's just a good inventor. Yeah. The Dookie Hauser ending. Yeah. What? You were just asleep? That's stupid. Yeah. Well, that, it was pretty much just like a kid's, like, Twilight Zone show, really, more than mm-hmm. anything else. It really was, when yeah. you think about it. Or like an Albert Hitchcock Presents kind of thing. Yeah. It kind of was. With more like monster creatures. Actually, was, oh, it was like our tales of the crypt without the creepy guy. Yeah, and that's actually what it was. It was yeah, it was actually it was, more it was, like yeah, tales it was of the crypt. Like I guess tales tales, of the crypt. they all kind of go backwards. You, you just keep going back and forth, you know. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was more like our old like tales of the crypt for our generation. We just didn't have that creepy little guy that popped up. And what was the other show in the eighties? Um, Elvira's Movie Time. No, that's that's that, that, that just played older movies. But yeah, there's she, another she show. She just played old movies and sat around with her giant boots. Just kind of <laughs> like um, and she ripped off Vampire and Vampire never got the money for it. But um, yeah, which is. So sad. I know. She had even movies about it too. Who vampire? Not vampire. This other chick. Elmer. Well, Elmer, she actually is in movies too. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, vampire has actually popped up in movies. She's like, I think, El- El- what's her name? Elvira or mm-hmm. whatever she called Elvira herself. Elvira was the 80s one. Vampire was like the 60s one. Yeah. Like and Elvira, one, the chick who plays Elvira actually still does it and actually really still looks pretty much the exact same. Really? Like huh. you can see a little bit of aging around her eyes. Other than that though, the woman looks the fucking same. And I think it's because she's never walked out in sunlight. Witchcraft. Probably. <laughs> yeah. Like I swear to God, like she, I've seen, I saw a picture of her, like Googled her. Oh, I'll get a few months back, and if you Google Elvira now, it's, she looks the exact fucking same. Like you can see She's a little fifty years old. Yeah, <laughs> you you can see like a little bit of aging and like on her face, but other than that, it's like con- compared to some people who were her yeah. age, that are her age, it's like she looks really freaking dead now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like she looks really good, and I swear to God, some of it's because she maybe spends twelve hours in, in the sun a year. <laughs> Yeah, she's like she's really so white. Or just sold her soul of the dark one. We never know. <laughs> Who knows? I don't know. She might have. Her hair stays up. Speaking kind of a, like the same thing. I watched that movie Hitchcock. That one was about like it was a biopic on the making of Psycho. Was is this the Hopkins one? Oh. Yeah, this is the Hopkins one. So it literally got a bunch of actors in it too because it sounds interesting. I haven't heard of this. It one. just came out a handful of months ago. Oh, okay. In theaters, probably a little bit more than that too. But um, yeah, it's a biopic on like the whole making from like beginning of end of Psycho, and it's based on the book of the making of it. But interesting. I always love biopics. Biopics are always really cool. I don't, mm-hmm. You can almost watch a biopic on somebody you barely even know when you watch it. Like, oh, that was cool. <laughs> Maybe only Sheree saw a bio. She saw that Lincoln biopic last year. Oh, her the, par- the, the, the Steven Spielberg one. Yeah, her parents made her go. <laughs> she she did not like it. It is kind of a long movie. No, yeah, that, that's the only reason that is. That has, movie is like, yeah, that, that would not appeal to somebody like her. Yeah, she she was like, her parents loved it. They thought it was like the most amazing thing ever. And she goes, I had to fight to not fall asleep. <laughs> I respect yeah. that movie. It's one of those no, movies, I think yeah, it's well made. But. Yeah, that's I one of those movies. movies is, that one's one that's worth watching. I can't imagine watching a movie a ton of times, though. Yeah. Like, you wouldn't go and be like, dude, I can't wait till this comes out on Blu-ray. Yeah, I can't wait to <laughs> get Fucking yeah. Waking that shit up! You know? Yeah. Dude, you think it makes it at the end? It'd be cooler if, it, if, if see, here's, like, I think the movie, if it was, like, a full-on, like, Lincoln biopic from, like, beginning to, even if it was just from beginning of presidency mm-hmm. to the end, I think that would be kind of cooler than just focusing on, the like... The 13th Amendment. Yeah, like, yeah. that thing. They're, like, being a courtroom drama one. Yeah. Have you seen the movie Amistad? Mm-mm. It's, it, it, Steven Spielberg movie, and it's about, like, um... The Spanish are still bringing slaves over to the U.S., though it's illegal by this point. Oh, okay. So they're on trial. 
So it kind of shows this cool kind of like part, kind of like a biopic, I guess, of like the times where like they go and they capture the slaves and they put them in the boats and it shows how horrible it all is. But then the movie is like another like hour and a half to two hours of like a courtroom drama. Nice. And you're like, oh, that's not nearly as good as the, the beginning part. <laughs> yeah, courtroom. It reminded me a lot of Lincoln though. That's, that's how I yeah. felt. When, when I watched both those movies, it's like, oh, they look kind of... When I went to see Lincoln, I knew what I was going to go see. I'm like, all right. I, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to say I was totally thrilled by it but i was just like okay I, I respect that i get what it was trying to be and daniel day lewis all the actors were amazing in it but i couldn't get over Tommy lee jones's hair i really think a crow just landed on his head and died it just stayed there yeah oh, until, until like, like he took it off at the very end yeah. oh, God. it's like oh there's this bird's been here no, i really day. do like that scene at the end after he gets home okay, okay he has a slave whatever but then he gets in bed with her and it just, it's very subtle he just kiss, kiss each other on the cheek i thought you'd like this like i just i just thought that was a really kind of sweet little Button at the end of the movie for him right there because his character is so emotionless throughout the whole movie. And it's like, oh, this guy actually. Now you see why he was fighting for it so much. Yeah, it makes so much more sense. Though I can see that being more of a rumor. I don't know if it's proven. Well, because I don't know how you prove some of those things. It's kind of like in this Albert Hitchcock movie. Unless he wrote it himself and signed it. Oh, proving that the white man slept with the slave is. Yeah. Um, The only way most of them would be able to do it is simple genetics. Mm -hmm. Like the simple fact that, you know, mom is the color of burnt wood and all of a sudden the kid comes out color of a mocha yeah i guess that's a good point well, yeah we do like that there there was i there, don't know if this there, guy had kids but yeah well there were lots of rumors. it doesn't mean he allowed her to sleep in the same bed though yeah that <laughs> no i'm sorry Mm-mm. that that wasn't something they did it was you know, if if a white owner had a slave that he used for sex that's what he used her for was for sex that was it. Well, it, the, movie, <laughs> the movie played it off. I don't know how much of this, how much of Hollywood this is, but it played it off like they were in love, like they were secretly married. Yeah, no, see, those things, that that, yeah. that kind of thing, it's like that did happen back in those days, but that mm-hmm. was like, you know, maybe one in like 150 slave owners would do something yeah. like that. Like, mm-hmm. it, it was incredibly, incredibly rare. It was more like, you know, the, the stuffy white, white yeah. wife doesn't want to have sex anymore because she's a fucking prude, so the man goes out and starts stiffing his slaves because they can't say no. Yeah. I know and, that's how it generally worked out back Yeah. Then. So that's that's kind of one of the things that bothers me about, like, Hollywood and... <laughs> like, like Patriot. Patriot. I was just Patriot, Patriot. I always say that yes! one. Yes! <laughs> when he's like, when we win this war, you slaves will be free. We're like... Oh, Master, so we we all win it for you. We get paid here. Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> Mel Gibson's the greatest. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's there's certain movies when it's like they take 1775, known for its tolerance. Yeah, <laughs> well, it's like it's like I understand why they do these things with characters. Yeah. You know, makes them a little not seem like such fucking dirt bags. Well, it's kind of like. In <laughs> but it's like that's how the life. Well, was. You, you couldn't start out the Patriot where like Mel Gibson's just like whipping a black person right? and like this is your hero. <laughs> exactly. It's like you can't. It's like I understand why Hollywood. What this guy do? I said. No crust! Yeah. <laughs> like, it cracks me out. It's like, I understand why Hollywood does that, but it just always makes me laugh because you get things like, uh, like you'll watch, they do it in TV shows too, like Spartacus was a great one that did it a lot. And it's like, back in the day, yes, your gladiators would be allowed to come up and talk to your Lanista about stuff. But it wasn't like, you know, it was on his own free will and he got to come up and sit down and have a chit-chat with you and hang out and... <laughs> You know, it's not like the slave chicks are just walking around and like, oh, yeah, yeah, I slept with him, whatever. And they're not, like, having casual conversations with these no, people. They're more scared for their life every day. Yeah, every it's like... Every second of the day. Yeah, so it always kind of cracks me up when I see these and see these things where it's, like, all of a sudden this high and mighty guy falls in love with the slave girl and they have the secret love in the back room. And it's like, I understand why you're doing that, but <laughs> it's not how society worked. It's not like they like they did with Thor in the Thor movies. Thor, the character, is the Norse god. Mm-hmm. He's a man whore. Mm-hmm. He has different. He has a wife that lives in the Odenheim or the Jodenheim. Excuse me, with a J. The Jodenheim. That's a mm-hmm. giant. He has a wife that lives with him on whatever that place is that they live. Well, that's Valhalla. Lady Sif. There's Lady Sif. Yeah, there's the Lady Sif, who's actually his wife, who lives on Valhalla, and then there's his mortal lover here on the planet Earth. It's like. Thor was a man whore, but well, when that, we that, bring that, him he, out he, for he, like, he, he could out drink anybody and out eat anybody. Yeah, what he could do all these sort of things. But it's kind of like Zeus is the same way too, you know. Yeah, Zeus had lots, Zeus lots is, he, of he, like he indiscretions like a, going on, but you never talk about it. I, something I want to say. Well, people always figured out. They might like it, like all like the Greek stories. Those there, somebody always figured out is like, oh Zeus, you're gonna get it now. Yeah. Oh jeez. <laughs> oh, and, and then Zeus be like, okay, I'm gonna go run away for a bit. <laughs> Gotta go hide. Pretend I didn't do this. I'll put a lightning storm across, you know, the ocean. I'll turn into a bull. 
Yeah, through a if bowl. I, if I fuck this chick as a bowl, they'll never assume it was me. It was the evil fuck, I'll just, I, I, I'm willing to go out and just fuck other bowls right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in a gay experience yeah. as an animal. What are they going to fucking do about it? I'm Zeus. I'm Zeus the man bowl. As, I love that in Clash of the Titans. Yeah, when he comes as the eagle. I swear to God it was you. And he turns back into Zeus. It's like, wow, like sweetie, you might want to open your eyes. Because your eagle flew into your room and you just had sex with it. Um, there, there's the part in, uh, well, actually, the movie hasn't come out yet, but in the, in the new Thor trailer, I, they hint at kind of like a little bit of like drama between uh, the... Uh, Natalie Portman. Natalie Portman character and the Lady Sif. Mm -hmm. but there's a part where she's walking, where it shows like Thor and Lady Sif and Natalie Portman walking through like some hall. And there's a scene without no dialogue, you see kind of like the Lady Sif just kind of like eyeing her, just like this fucking bitch, you know? And it's just like. Because the Lady Sif was not a nice lady. <laughs> She's a fucking badass in that movie, She's and that chick is gorgeous. So I is lady even though Natalie Portman's beautiful, is Thor? I'd be like, I think you want some. You think you want a chick to take care of herself? Doesn't need saving every well, five Thor minutes. Thor doesn't care. He gets whatever he wants because you yeah. know. He's yeah, Thor. I know. And, there, and there's a reason why. But they're Thor giving has. them. are giving them more like morals. They're giving them more comics. like American values. Yeah, yeah, I was gonna say that's the whole and thing. And a British accent. Because that's the thing. Yeah. Though, it's like they give him like a, that kind of like American slams. It's like no, no, no. Thor would just be going around and be like, get out my fucking way. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it's just like, you know, the Lady Sif that's in, in the movie Thor, mm -hmm. they never touch on the fact that that's his wife. Mm -hmm. That's that's not his girlfriend. That wasn't actually a woman that he happened to sleep with there. He was actually legally, like, he was married and, well, in the Norse version, it would be legal, I guess. But he was actually married to the Lady Sif. Mm -hmm. So, it's like, that's kind of where that funky tension comes from. Mm -hmm. And it's one of those things that, unless you know Norse mythology, you're never going to know that yeah. shit. Just like there's so much stuff, like when you watch Captain America and any of those movies, if you never read the comic books, there's a lot of stuff that's tucked around in the backgrounds that you're not going to notice. Do you actually it's going to go right over your head. You actually can see the, because uh, we kind of forget, the Human Torch, Johnny Storm, that's not the original Human Torch. It was a 1940s 40, yeah. Human Torch. And if you look, when they go to the Stark the Expo. Human Torch. And if I remember correctly, Johnny is, he calls himself something else. He calls, he, he, he still calls himself. She called the Human Torch because this, nobody wanted to get like, you Yeah, know, I was going to say, because I think the original Fantastic Four, they called him something else. And then they changed him to the Human Torch. Because he always said Flame On and all that stuff. But they never, they didn't call him the Human Torch when the Fantastic Four first came out. I know that. Hmm. They called him something else and then they turned him into the Human Torch. Well, if you look in the background, when they go to the, the first Stark Expo and uh, the Captain America First Avenger, you can see the hu the original Human Torch like in a red kind of like flame suit, like yeah. in a test tube, if you look around. Yeah. They, well, and there's all kinds of stuff like that in those movies. And it's, you know, if you didn't read the comic books and you don't know what to look for in the background, mm -hmm. you're never going to notice it. Like, you say Mr. Marvel to people, most people, what the fuck is that? That, that was Superman. Mm -hmm. Before Superman ever existed. You know, there or that was... Yeah. Shazam? You Shazam? Shazam? Yeah, I was Shazam. like, no, Shazam's. not Captain Marvel. Well, Captain Marvel. Captain Marvel. Captain Shazam. America. Yeah. Captain, I mean, uh, Cap, uh, Superman came before yeah. Captain Marvel, and then Captain Marvel. There is a lawsuit. He was not part of Marvel Comics actually. There's yeah. a lawsuit. Like you got because he had the spit curl. He looked a lot like Cause, him. Yeah, because he looked and just like him, but he was he more was, magic he was and yeah. he was a boy. And then eventually. Because DC did this thing where they would just, if they had a lawsuit, they'd often just buy the property. That's yeah. how they got Blue Beetle, and that's how they got Captain, Captain Marvel, Marvel, who's now yeah. Shazam. So, because uh, Cap, because Marvel Comics, they have a Captain Marvel too. I don't know what the fuck he does, well, but, yeah, but, yeah, but yeah, that's one of those ones. It's like you know, Captain Marvel came out, and half the people have no clue, like no idea what that is, and it's kind of like, well, that was super bad. Like, a lot of people the don't know Superman. that. <laughs> yeah, it's like, that That was Marvel's attempt at Superman. Mm -hmm. Or no, yeah, Captain that, Marvel is... He was that, from something else. Yeah, it was like something... It was like some, like, back in the day when they used to have, like, 20 he, different comic book companies. Yeah. It, yeah, it was when they had a bunch. But it was, you know, he was kind of like the first attempt at yeah. Superman. But nobody knows that because Superman himself became mm -hmm. so freaking big. Just like, you know, each... Each side, both Marvel and DC, have the exact same characters on either side. It's just for some reason one worked out better on the other on one side than it did mm. on the other. Well, it's like, do you remember that show from I think it's from like this? Is it from like the late seventies or the early eighties? Like the Shazam show of like the two kids and the camel and the genie. Shazam show. And they'd say two Shazam, kids. and the fucking genie would come out. Two kids. No, I remember there's the Macaulay Culkin, the, the Wish Glove. No, 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 not the Shaquille O'Neal one. Yeah, no, 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 no. I'm thinking of a different movie. It was this TV show. I'll go on that. But no, it, it, was, it, was, it was like a Hanna Barbera one. It could be even from the '60s too, but it's called like Shaz This used to really confuse me when I was a kid because you know there was 
Shaquille so O'Neal. The There's era. only one Shazam, god Captain damn it. Captain Marvel, and then there was the two kids and the fucking camel. They're all Shazam. <laughs> I got but, one for you in a little while. We'll go on with this one. They're all Shazam. Well, that's bad. Well, I can't remember. I haven't watched that show in, like, since I was probably really young, because they probably don't even play it on, like, even Boomerang or anything mm-hmm. anymore. Boomerang's the I only think... place I can find Hanna-Barbera shows. Well, well, even Boomerang, though, like, they kind of, like, now, like, they don't play, like, the older stuff. They play, like, the 90s stuff on there all the time. It's right, like, like, the Johnny Bravo. You might see, like, Flintstones and Jetsons, but At you don't... At 4 o'clock in the morning? Yeah, but you don't see Space Scooby-Doo. Ghost and, like, the Herculoids too often or anything. Yeah. I think it's just one of those things that's kind of like, it was already a few generations ago when we were watching it, so I think oh, it's just fading out. Kids will Well, I think that's, shit. like, because Cartoon Network's made by Hanna-Barbera, so I think at first they're like, fuck, we don't have that much stuff. We got this, like, cartoon cartoon show. That's about our only new shit. We'll just <laughs> throw all our old is. stuff back on there. Well, what happened was Hanna-Barbera was originally its own thing. It may have been owned by Paramount, but I want to say it may I think have been it, I think thing. it was owned by Paramount, because Paramount well, Great America of... used to have all the Hanna-Barbera characters. Well, a lot of times they, they, they get, like, they just get, like, agreements. They're not, like, owned. They just get, like, a, you know. Contracts like, is yeah. what it is. And then Warner Brothers bought a Cartoon Network, mm-hmm. and that's when a lot of, that's why a lot no, of. No, Warner Brothers bought Paramount. They maybe bought Paramount, but I know they bought Cartoon Network at least. Yeah, because they because Warner Brothers took over Paramount. And the only way I know all this is because of Great America down in uh, Mountain View. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Great America was owned by Paramount. That's why it was mm-hmm. Paramount's Great America. And when you went there, you had all the Looney Tunes. You had like the Top Gun, right? Yeah, you not only you had like Top Gun, which is called something else now, which drives me crazy. The I still flight call Deck it or something. Yeah, yeah, it's, like f- yeah it's like Flight Deck or something. They still don't play the Danger they call Zone. Like, you're yeah, they, they, it's like, just quiet the entire walk now. What if you just like stay in line? It's just like, you're in the Danger Zone. Zone. Like, in the Danger to... Zone. Not the Danger, like Dangerous Zone. They're like, they couldn't afford the rights for it. Yeah, right. You have to change a couple words. Or but Dangerous Land. I don't know. It was going into that park that always let me figure out who was in charge of what. Because at first it started out as Paramount's Great America. And you'd go in there and they had, you know, Scooby-Doo, the Flintstones, all the Hanna-Barbera characters. Smurfs Land. They had a Smurfs land. They, they did, yes. Houses. They did have the Smurfs and everything. So they had all that. Well, then all of a sudden, it became Paramount's Great America, and it had slash Nickelodeon. And then all of a sudden, yeah. they had all Nickelodeon there. And then it wasn't Paramount's Great America anymore. It was just Great America. But when you walked in, it was all WB characters. Uh, that's when WB took over, and you had your Looney Tunes still. Everybody was still there, but nothing said Paramount Great America anymore. It just said Great America and then you had all your WB characters. And now it's not owned by anybody, and it's just Great America. <laughs> Some, something I think Disney... I mean, well, because, well, like... Something I think uh, Warner Brothers should really do with Six Flags and Great America is kind of bring back the atmosphere. Because something Disney was always smart about, they always had their franchises. They're going to add in Marvel sections mm-hmm. to their theme parks. Yeah. I really think, and I was talking to this with my friend, with our friend Wes, mm-hmm. I really think Warner Brothers with Six Flags, they should have kind of like, a, you know, a Gotham Streets area. Have like the the Gotham Backstreet Grill. You just go in, have Harley Quinn well, serving some French fries. that's one of the things that makes universal. Because yeah. like, well, that's the difference between, I guess, a theme park and, and like kind of just like a Ride park. You can see yeah. the thing is Disney has both those. They well, that, have, that's what I mean though. Like yeah. that's I, I think that's what, you, what you're saying though is you want them to become a theme park. Yeah, it's very exactly. rare that I say this though. The old like Disney. I like Disney here on the West Coast. Like I don't mind Disneyland mm-hmm. down in L.A. But Disneyland is really awesome if you're four. If you're 14 or older, Disneyland kind of sucks. Well, the way I was saying, Universal I, Studios on the East Coast, and you go to like. Disney well, Orlando yeah Orlando mm-hmm. that's pretty fucking cool <laughs> well the one thing it's like <laughs> it's like, like, like on the like the original ones like Universal Studios and kind of like Disneyland you almost have to make more fun out of what it really is yeah you can't go there and be like amuse me Amuse me now, damn it. <laughs> yeah, that's why that it's like... Work. I'm saying, like... I'm you have to go there and be like, Oh, oh chicken, fuck, Indiana Jones, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Star Wars! Oh, God! Oh, 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 it's it's well, like Robin just dropped acid. Yeah. Well, it's just like... <laughs> that's kind of how you have to go there. You can't yeah. go there and be like, Yo, Mickey! Everything. What's cool here? Just shove this guy in a mouse hey, costume. <laughs> hey, man, get off me! He just always got to crack Help me, up, senor! Like... Mickey, why are you talking like that? Why are you speaking Spanish, Mickey? <laughs> no, but I... Maybe you're Disney fucking talking is... you're going to speak Spanish. Disney is rolling over his grave when his characters are speaking Spanish in his own park. <laughs> with, like, like, I've never been with to the him. Orlando ones, but you get, you get to be, like, teased with all the commercials they show us here on the fucking West Coast, which is obnoxious. It's... Yeah, we get on the, out They're the like, ass out here. They're like, this sweet ride. It's like, I think... But it, you have to come all the way to Florida. I think it's Universal Studios. It might be, it might be Disney World. They got, like, an Aerosmith roller coaster that plays Aerosmith music yeah. as you ride the roller coaster like what the fuck Steven Tyler sits next to you yeah I know <laughs> 
Yeah, that's like that's the one thing. It's like I don't like Florida. It's I not just, my favorite state, but I would go visit that. I just yeah. think that would be really cool though. Just having like almost a DC section of the park, mm-hmm. of, like of like Six Flags, go in there. It's like, oh, and if you go to like this back alley, a certain time of night, you can see a rich couple get shot. <laughs> Who wants to be young Bruce Wayne? Hey! You know? Want to see your parents? Oh, get they shot? got cheap on this now. It's just fucking um, <laughs> Bugs Bunny came out and did it. <laughs> yeah. Bugs Bunny. I've been looking for this man ever since I started fighting crime. <laughs> No, I want, I want a well, you, know, you know what you can almost do, too, is you can expand it all, even more, because then you can have, like, a Lord of the Rings section. Yeah. You can have, the you can have like, the Looney Tunes section. It'd be cool. They, they just don't really make theme parks anymore. I think, because here's the thing, is children nowadays are not amused by amusement kind of stuff. Oh, shit. Which is here's another so one. lame. Here's another one. You can walk by the chalk outline of where the comedian was thrown out of the building in Watchmen. Yeah. <laughs> you know? With a little, little smiley face. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, this button right next to him. No, With I a guy was... dressed like Rorschach holding a sign like, the end is nigh, walking by. Oh, I love Rorschach. But I think it's the thing, though, it's like, I just think that that, that must be the reason why. Because I remember, like, as a kid, a lot of people be like, fucking Universal Studios is gay, man. This was the 90s. It was the 90s. <laughs> man, so that's how we like, talk gay. in the 90s. It was gay. <laughs> and that's the thing, it's like, you're like, you're like but it's, got, it's all themed and it's got movie stuff. There's Jurassic Park and Back to the Future, which you don't have anymore. But, I never uh, went on the Jurassic Park ride. I wasn't there the one time I went there. It, oh. it, it took me three times to go on the Jurassic Park ride because it was broken like twice I was there. Oh. I'm not going to lie. I'm a nerd. I want to go in the Harry Potter park. I hear it's really is cool. Is that part Universal? People... Yeah. It's, they, yeah now, they... is that in the Orlando one or is that here? It's in the Orlando one. You think it would be They're like... They're all, all the good shits all in the Orlando one. All the good shit. All the good shits in the Orlando one. Like, like I you said... You see a commercial for that you're like, oh, are they approving the parks? No. That's why no. it's like, I love Disneyland out here, don't get me wrong, but our Disneyland out here on the West Coast is great if you're fucking four. After or if you just dropped ass. <laughs> yeah, or, yeah, or <laughs> if you're like <laughs> fucked up on drugs. <laughs> because it's like you go there and... There's one small world. Yeah. There's one roller coaster for the entire thing. Everything else is really little kid rides. You got teacups, but that makes you well, sick. You know what made me mad? It's like the Matterhorn was always talked about like, dude, it's the Matterhorn. It's the fucking shit. And like it's as a kid, it was always broken. But it's it called the Matterhorn. Yeah. And then I finally went there like, like we had like this like choir band trip in school. And it was like, we finally got a ride and it was like, that's it? Yeah, it, that's what has, I, that's what I mean. And you have to sit, like, really gay in it, too. Like, they don't have, like, spacers. You just kind of all put your legs around each other. Yeah, like every, you... yeah, everybody just gets to sit, like, around yeah, your you, legs. You, so yeah, you, you better you... better hope the person in front of you and so behind you, just you go, like, like... Especially when you're, like, three dudes, you get to the top, you're like, oh, fuck. <laughs> awesome, now we're going to go Not down in the middle and all of us like, are just going to slam nothing. into each other. This is yeah. great. This is going to feel awesome. I know they, they had the whole... Th- Disney actually said they want to do a Matterhorn movie, but we'll see what happens with that. With the Yeti? The Yeti yeah, I was going to say. Down, I don't know. No, I think Disney. I think that's another somebody one. Somebody lost their head once on the Matterhorn. Really? They always mm-hmm. say that, but there's like somebody like stood up during the ride. Yeah, they oh, always no. say that, but I can't find but the spot the, that that would happen. I have no idea. I can see somebody smack like, oh, that's, oh! that's what I mean. Like, that's the one thing I can't find. I've ridden the Matterhorn. Like, I can't find anything in there that would cause a I decapitation. Know, but then again, part of you, you never know back in the day that I could have fucking just had some sharp ass piece of metal. <laughs> yeah, sitting there, oh, whoops, are bad. That took out your carotid, my sorry. Well, it's also one of those things you kind of hear, like, remember when you were a kid, and when you were, like, in the fourth grade or third grade, you'd believe it, because, like, who'd fucking lie to me? Yeah, why would my but, parents lie? Yeah. No, your well, parents, but, like, some kid would be like, <laughs> Nobody lies time. to me. They, you'd hear some bullshit, kind of like, yeah, man, if you actually go to, like, some guy, like, the, the, the Yeti had a robot spasm and just full of ripped some kid's head off one time. <laughs> and, like, <laughs> or you hear some You're shit. You're like, why would this guy lie to me? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what, or you My parents said never lie. Why would this kid lie? Yeah. Because yeah. he clearly didn't have very good parents. Yeah. It's always that kind of shit. You, yeah. know, you hear something like that. Or like, you know, if it's a small world, if you get lost, you know, then like Disney takes you and they melt you down and you they turn you into one of those robots. Yeah, I was going to say, world. I was going to say, that it used to be, um, my parents used to tell me that it's a small world is, that's where they put the kids that ran away from their parents in oh. Disneyland. If you run away from your parents in Disneyland and they can't find your parents, they're just going to lock you up and it's a small world and they, you have to go sing they all day long. Just, you just, like, put you into, like, this robot. That you, like, this, like, pow- it's kind of like Matrix. It has to be powered by, like, kinetic and human energy. Right, you know? yeah, just something. And there's just, like, a tube going on the back of your neck so you're just forever, like, alive inside this robot. Ugh, well, yeah. Ky- well, Kyle's dad goes through the underground jail at Disney. Underground jail? Yeah. He, he lit up a joint there and they caught yeah. him, like, in seconds. Really? And they'll let, like, you, they'll let you drink. 70s. How- They'll let you get fucking tracked. Is it like Mickey with a baton or something? Like, you're like, so Steven? <laughs> it's in the castle. It's in the castle. I know that part of it is. 
Just like you can rent the room in the castle. Yeah, I know. You for can, like a ridiculous amount of money. It's like five thousand dollars a night. You could be like, you could be like super Republican and just be like, <laughs> I can do this well, just because I can. There's several rooms. There's like the, the yeah. I was there's gonna say there's castle. There's the pirate room. Because in there's well the in the actual room. in the actual castle <laughs> itself, <laughs> the actual castle itself of uh -huh. Disney when you walk up to it and it's got you know the big old castle. There's three rooms in that that you can. If it's like two or three rooms in that that you you can stay in if you want to, and like parents and stuff w rent them out for their daughters to have you know like a princess themed birthday party in the Jesus castle Christ. and all the princesses get to go. It's freaking like five thousand dollars a night just just for the room. That does not include the cost of how much it costs for them to make you a cake to put in that room, and all the, the costumes shit. that they provide for the little girls, how much they're paying the actors actresses and actors to come up there out of their day spend time with these kids it's like you end up walking out of there and these parents spend like twenty thousand dollars plus on a kid's one birthday party there's, in the disney park there's one is there's like a pirates of the caribbean room there's that one then there's walt's actual room there's some, yeah apparently there's a room somewhere on main street where walt stayed and it has a golden toilet or some bullshit like yeah that's that, that i've heard about and that one if i remember correctly they say kids can't go to that one yeah, yeah. i believe it yeah that's the one if i remember correctly that's like on like the secret hidden like adult tour because disney does do adult stuff mm -hmm. it's just it's at night and it is like they allow drinking. When I when you say, you can get trashed in Disneyland, especially at night. When you say that, because I've never really been <laughs> to Disneyland, and they're just like, I hate my life. I, I haven't been to Disneyland since I was like sixteen, so I'm kind of wondering: does like does Disney have or maybe probably seventeen? Does Disney do they have like a back room or something where Mickey Mouse has like a gag ball <laughs> and shit like that? You say it's, adult stuff. It's like it's it's like eyes wide shut or something. No, that's it's, what comes to mind. It's at night. Main Street becomes. It turns into like bars. Like Main Street stops serving your little milkshakes and French fries, and they start serving martinis and they beer. Start and out the fucking costume they, Yeah, they they start <laughs> You're one serving to fuck like me. yeah, like they start serving actual like legit alcohol, and you can actually start getting drunk, and they actually have like a little bit more adult entertainment. But it's first season pass holders. That's the only other downfall. Uh, that's why I had never heard of any of this until my friend Mindy was telling me about it because I couldn't figure out for the life of me. Why an almost 30-something-year-old female cop would get so excited about going to Disneyland every year. I, I couldn't figure it out. And then she told me it's because they have season passes and they've gone every year with their season passes. So they get special treatment. So they get all these things and they basically get to walk around the park drunk I just got the all image day of just kind of like, who wants to do a body shot off Daisy Duck? Right? <laughs> like, yeah, know? it's... Just really wrong things. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so the first time she told me about this, and she's like, oh yeah, you get all drunk in Disneyland. I'm like, well... Just it, found it, out it, Daisy Duck it, is actually a dude. Yeah, I'm like, this sounds Eggs so weird. I'm like, face. so is this, yeah, so does this mean like the characters are getting drunk with you too at night? Because that would... I might be willing just to go well, you, sit you, goofy, get goofy. Well, you couldn't imagine, like, if, like, I see picture, like, you couldn't imagine someone getting really hammered and then just a bunch of children just, like, push, pushing them out of the way to get to the Indiana Jones ride. Oh, boy! Fuck oh, boy! Hit. I wonder if you just have that problem like that. Some chick gets really drunk. Some kids go, like, it's this way I'm going down, like, the back streets of, like, Main Street or something. Sees, like, goofy getting blown by some chick, like, oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> like ruin it and, like that child's yeah. mind be corrupted forever <laughs> oh don't stop oh, yeah. Billy don't look don't look Billy run yeah. run <laughs> oh the beloved Disney characters are just getting tortured oh jeez uh, no. and I do say beloved Disney characters because there's some that I don't like there's plenty of Disney characters I don't like, and most of them are all new. I'm, I'm kind of wondering, just back on the theme park thing, because you say the, the, the castle, the, the castle one. Mm -hmm. um, I'm imagining, because that's right in the center of the park. Mm -hmm. Is there, like, so at night, it's like, you can't come out until we say. They just, like, bring these, like, steel doors well, down. Well, see, and that's what I, that's kind of, <laughs> that's the thing that I'm wondering, is, like, if you stay the night in that castle... Yeah, at night, like, once the park closes, does that literally mean, like, they lock you in the castle at night? Because I know the castle has, like, the castle's where the kitchen is. And the only way I figured that one out was watching Cake Boss, because he built a cake at Disneyland, and he had to do it in the castle. So the castle is where, like, the kitchen and everything is, and the office is, but I don't know. I'm like, I've never been inside it, so it could, it has a basement and everything to it. So this thing could be, like, huge inside. I had kind of, I'm starting to feel like this castle might end up being, like, its own hotel. And, like, yeah, they keep you in there, 
but <laughs> they have a feeling that it's like they have room service for you the entire time. You yeah, probably they have, probably have, they look. probably have some kind of like, they probably even have like TVs in the room that look like mirrors. Mm-hmm. So the little girls can go mirror, mirror on the wall and it turns into a TV. Who uh, knows? It's fucking Disneyland, man. Yeah, they have the yeah, money, they have it, the money probably, to yeah. do it and you're paying out the ass to do it. I would not be surprised if, is set up like that. Like, if even if it's like, you know, the housekeepers are dressed up like the three little godmothers from Sleeping Beauty to walk around the hallway so the kids can feel like it's more fun. Mm-hmm. Who knows? It's Disneyland, man. They do all kinds of crazy shit. I've seen the actual castle in Europe. You get, like, Europe. a wake-up call, like, Goofy knocks on the door and... <laughs> get up, fucker! <laughs> get up, you cheap bastard! <laughs> Minnie Mouse comes up, I need to use the bathroom! Daddy just got his ass kicked by Goofy in front of his daughters this bad day. <laughs> he couldn't afford. Guess what? That check bounced. So, <laughs> yeah. comes in with a baton. Uh, Bring up the girls. Yeah. They need to see this. You know. This is Daddy, don't no! write bad like, checks. <laughs> you do not fuck with Disney, motherfucker. Do not fuck with Disney. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, it goes back. So- it goes, it goes down to like jail with Steven. <laughs> I guess we're smoking a joint. <laughs> Just, hey man, you need this more than me. <laughs> I feel like Disneyland would be one of the greatest places to smoke a joint in too. You would think they'd be. Feels like it's like made for it. Right, that's what I mean. Like I feel like it's like a place that's designed for you to get high. Like it looks like it's a place that's designed for you to smoke a lot of pot and walk around. I mean, you have areas where you go and get to play with pirates. <laughs> Who doesn't want to get high and go sit in a boat and stare at pirates? Are <laughs> well, you kidding it, it, it me? It really it's does like... just seem like the place where people, you, you would really just be people just smoking joints and riding, like, because all the rides are all hella Imagine... slow anyways. That, yeah, so like, like Mr. Per... Toad's Wild Ride would they're be probably, a wild ride. Of, like, you know, adults in there just, like, with bongs, just like. <laughs> <laughs> I so would adult 420 in Disneyland. That'd be great. If because Disneyland very, shut it down. very few the rides in there that, that go fast unless it's, it's like California Adventure. Yeah, that's what I mean. There's one roller coaster in all of Disneyland. It's in California Adventure, and it's also the the fastest no, there's, right there's there. the, uh, the one Space Mountain. Space Mountain. Oh, Space Mountain, that's right. But the still, that was, maker. Yeah, I was say, that was not as fast or as big as the one that's in California. Remember, no, that one's like as inside. Fast, but it's, yeah. But no, what you could do is like, imagine, like, I just got the image of just someone oh, like, like. fucking Star Tours? Yeah. <gasps> well, I want to go, I, if I do go back to Disneyland, I want to go back to Star, they have Tours, new Star Tours. They have a bunch of new Star Wars. Plus, I can only imagine they're going to add more. I mean, I, I mean, we talk shit on like, you know, George Lucas and Disney sometimes. But really. That should be pretty cool. New Star Tours ride, new Star Wars section. They're gonna add in a yeah. whole Star Wars section now. I, yeah. My nephews. It's already added in there. My brother, yeah. When my brother, well, my brother and uh, his girlfriend, the kids went to Disneyland. They said they have a section where it's a Jedi Academy, where they give a bunch of kids a bunch of toy lightsabers and say, "Okay, here we show, teach you how to swing." And then all of a sudden, like, See, out of the ground, the, the Darth Vader noise music starts to play. And all of a sudden, Darth Maul and Darth Vader come out on these platforms. Like, oh no, kids, you gotta fight Darth Vader and Darth Maul. It's gotta suck for those guys. But to be, for those kids, though, because what happens is... It's just, you, you, you know how many adults try to line up in that line from probably before the children do? I was gonna say, that's the hard, that's gotta be the hardest that's, part that's, for you, them. You know, you know there's probably some bouncer guy like, sir... You are You're... too old to do this. I am sorry. That's why. Oh, I... me, me, me! Just some like thirty-year-old guy. <laughs> That's one of the things I always try and get away with with my tiny size, since I'm only five feet tall. Is I always try and do that, like when I go places, and they're like, "Oh, you know, you're an adult, you can't do it." I'm like, "But I'm their size. Doesn't that count? I'm the same size as them." They're like, "No, damn you. it." <laughs> <laughs> we still have to call you an adult. Like, dang it! You get in there, like I just well, it was like I could only it, they, when they first explained to me what came to mind was a bunch of kids just running, just pelting. Like, right? Yeah, it's like, like, like oh, oh, Darth Vader outfit. But what happened? I only get ten dollars an hour for this. Just now, but I guess he moves very slow. It's just, okay, kids, you got to block his attacks. So You're there. You just imagine some like adult just beating children of life. And the kid has to put out his hand, like use the force, move the hand that he like just stumbles back. Like, okay, Johnny, Billy's next. So. How funny. Just, oh, awesome. just, okay, Darth Vader's coming. You gotta fight him. Just starts like melting these children. <laughs> <laughs> he actually force grabs one of them, chucks them across, like all force unleashed, just chucks them across the park. <laughs> oh god, are they really making another Star Wars movie? I mean, yeah, I was a new here. trilogy. <laughs> it's gonna, oh, Disney's wait, not okay. gonna spend all that money and not make money off Star Wars. Okay, so it's gonna be a whole new trilogy. Well, there's there's a couple things: whole new trilogy and then standalone movies. So they're gonna get we're gonna get. Uh, Standalone movies on, like, say, Yoda, or standalone movie mm-hmm. on, like, Boba Fett. How about the Ewoks? Can we go to the moon of Endor? Go back to Ewoks. Yeah. I'm sure Yay! we could. 
that they're going to go to. That's my request, George Lucas, is give me more Ewoks. Zack Snyder said something like he wants to do, like, that's the guy who did Watchmen. Okay. 300. He's doing the new Superman. And he's doing the new Superman, yeah. Aha! Uh-huh. Was he, our, our another new mystery fella? He, he what? The, 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 the other new mystery fellow that's playing the new Superman. Yeah. yeah. The, the another new name guy. And hopefully won't. No name guy is going to come up and do you know, Superman. Get and then, paralyzed or, die, or kill himself. Yeah. <laughs> or get no jobs like this last one did. Nothing happened to this last guy who he's played the last TV Superman. And he just, he's been on TV. Yeah, he just, it's just, that was the biggest thing he's done. Poor guy, yeah. Yeah, poor guy. That was like his biggest thing and brought him into Hollywood and now you're like second rate TV shows, dude. Sorry. Oh, you, yeah. He came out a little it's bit okay, better well, than Christopher Reeves. You can did. always say, though, is he did Superman. He was in yeah. Scott Pilgrim. Sounds weird to say he did Superman. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I did Superman. I caught him in a corner. And <laughs> the easy, the best he was thing. like, no, no, don't pull the kryptonite it's out not, on me. It's not gay if it's Superman, it's just dominance. <laughs> but no, he's well, that, that, that would ruin somebody's mind. Like, just somebody's like, well, wait, wait, if you have a bunch of kryptonite, what are you going to do? I'm going to go rape Superman. Boy. He can't fight back now. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, where's your heat vision now? Oh, God. <laughs> no, but... Um, Just fucking flips on a red light. Red sun. <laughs> Kryptonite. Where are you gonna go? Day. Yeah. Anyway, uh, they said what they were gonna do. Zack Snyder said he wants to do kind of like a remake of Seven Samurai, but it's about seven Jedi, I guess, defending a small village or city or something against, I don't know, Imperial... I don't know what it is, but something around that ballpark. Interesting. So... The Magnificent Seven Jedis. I checked that shit out. So, are we gonna have one Jedi with his purple lightsaber and have to have the one black Jedi that Samuel L. Jackson with his one purple lightsaber again? We'll probably have more than it's 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 modern times. We'll probably have more than one black Jedi. I hope so. Probably have more like alien Jedi too or so if I had to guess. Those were my favorite. I'm not gonna lie. It was the fact that like in you didn't really see him in the original. Mace trilogy. Windu was one of my favorite characters. I'll yeah. Say. In the in the new trilogy. In the newer trilogies, it was really kind of cool to see different. Multicultural. Yeah, everybody. the multicultural. Jedi's more than just multiculture. I was in like multi like space culture. Yeah, I was gonna say I don't really know. We <laughs> how, how we have they haven't come to visit us yet, so we haven't come up with the proper well, term yeah. for people well, of another planet. Well, in, but in, I'm sure we will. I'm sure we'll come up with some politically correct term when they do come around, and it, it won't be allowed to call them aliens anymore. Pretty soon, it's, it's gonna be what. Like, visitor from another planet is going to be the politically correct term well, or some s- bullshit. In Star Wars, it was like, the one Mexican guy was Biggs, he died, the one the one black guy was Lando for the yeah. original trilogy, yeah. so that's when you got to give the newer, tri- the newer trilogy the, the, four. The, the one bad guy was named Porkins. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Porkins, that's right, yeah. Oh, God. Mm-hmm. You know what movie I went to go watch again that uh, I haven't seen for a while, but it's like, I'm like, I need to go see this again. It was The Postman. Do you remember that one with Kevin Costner? Yeah, I saw that actually... People always Quite talk- a few months back. I, I saw like one of those like top 25, like they, they had this countdown list of like the biggest box office flops. And they had that movie on there. And lots saying. of you are like, every single movie they had there, they were like, this movie is shit. And it's like... Yeah, we're still playing it and making money on it. Well, it's like, well, it's like, okay, just because a movie didn't make all its money back, mm-hmm. like, because, you know, they have movies also on there, like, Waterworld, which there's, like, a lot of times they always talk about. Because I was going to say, well, that was one of those movies that made more money once it was out of theaters than it ever did well, when it was Well, because the, the movie took, like, 150 days to make, which was, like, f- three or four months over schedule. Like, it was one of those movies where everything kind of went to shit. Shit, yeah. And the movie cost, like, uh, like 148 million to make, if not, maybe a little bit more. And it, but it made back 90 million in its theater run. Yeah. But in the long run, it's probably made its money back and then some. Yeah, and then double that. Well, The Postman's another one like that, too, because I think that movie cost like $130 million and only made back like $98 million. Yeah. The Postman, that's... You're going to feel like... I'm going to feel, feel like a dumbass saying this. When I was a child, but when I was really young, I remember seeing that movie on TV. At first, I thought it was a Civil War movie. <laughs> No, I, I, I could get that, actually. Well, Anybody at first glance, yeah, I was gonna it say, doesn't if you, look like what you think it might be. Yeah, if you came into that movie in the middle of the movie, like you did miss mm-hmm. the first half of it, I could totally see somebody doing that, because I kind of thought the same thing the first time I saw it. I missed the first, like, half hour of it. Like, so. I was five or something. Yeah, so. like, I wasn't, I wasn't young. I just had never seen it, and I missed, like, the first half of it. And some of the clothes they were wearing, I was like, okay, well, I, wasn't, I didn't quite jump to Civil War just because of the clothes, but I was just kind of like, is this pre-postal service like the postal service never <laughs> like is this the story of how the postal service came about because i was kind of i was kind of confused i missed the whole first half of the story and then the guy i was seeing at the time he was, that's when he explained it to me he was like no he told me about the first half and i was like oh okay but no i, I get that if you came into that movie and you and didn't really see young. Young. or if you yeah, just kind of like young, looked at the tv and then looked away you'd be like well, yeah the it looks they like glory <laughs> yeah it looks like it's a movie about the beginning of the postal service like there was no such thing as a postman and all of a sudden there's some man wandering around the country calling himself a postman but 
it's not that way. <laughs> well, it's kind of funny because I just I remember like it, it, the postal service is kind of going down. You know, postal, postal service office, sucks. Post office is going I'm down. I'm sorry, I have like so no faith in the postal the service. The one does me all good. Well, I, ain't gonna, I know everybody that works there too. Well, I just know that right <laughs> now with stamps.com and other like online ser- like postal services. The general post office is just having trouble getting by. So we're like, remember? They just show the post. They just show the postman. That postman yeah. movie always just feels like, because I mean, it was made before that time. But that, that is was, like that is Roadhouse to the postal. Yeah, service. I was gonna say it's the Roadhouse. To I the mean, how many world. people do you think became postmen because of that movie? Though <laughs> yeah. that movie, it's probably like Top Gun, where Top Gun had a bunch of like you could sign up for the military right outside the movie theater. Yeah, come. They be probably had the fucking postal service yeah. outside the movie theater. Like, come on, man, sign up. You know, you're join your postman. country. Somebody's got to deliver those mail. Somebody's got to bring hope to the they world. They actually had people like stationed outside of, of theaters playing Top Gun. They're yeah, like, Top Gun. They actually really? had military guys yeah, like, they, stationed yeah, outside. The, mili- um, the Air Force. Top Gun played for, in some theaters for like two years. Yeah, I like, believe that. You, like you almost can't think about that nowadays. You kind of forget. Like, oh yeah, movies used to play for more than like maybe a month. <laughs> well, that's why I counted it out. Okay, Pitch Perfect. The movie Pitch Perfect. <laughs> I thought that I... movie was called what was it? Pitch Slap. That yeah, I thought because the, the, the tagline was Pitch Slap. I'm like, you get they, Pitch Slaps. And I was like. They got a way of calling a movie Pitch Slap. <laughs> it was just a tagline for yeah, it. Yeah, I was going to say, that's awesome. I like that. But so, yeah, that movie, Pitch Perfect, I really wanted to see it. It looked like it was pretty freaking funny. It Good was God. in theater for 25 days. That is it. 25 days. And the way I figured that out is because it came out on October 5th of 2012. Or, yeah, 2012, October 5th. And I went to go see it October 25th. Uh-huh. It was gone. Well, I have a lot of movies, though. Like, that's actually better than some movies. Some movies only get, like, two weeks and, like, fucking... Yeah! Chronicles of Riddick. Yeah, a lot of stuff. It's just like, whoop! And some, of them, it, okay, some of them only get Chronicles one week. Chronicles of Riddick got, like, two like weeks or one week. Yeah, because I ended up catching that one, and I like And some that. of them only get, like, one week. Like, Midnight in Paris, I only had one week. Like, if somebody, yeah. if somebody didn't tell me and I went, the, like, the next day, I would have missed it. Was yeah. that, like, was that, like, on the special viewing No, thing, it was. It, it, it was, like, once, once, like, they probably said, like... We got one week before sun comes out. Uh, bring in the midnight in Paris. Like. I wanted to see a place beyond the pines, that new Ryan Gosling movie, but that was only uh, in theaters for like a week yeah. here yep. at least. So yeah, one of the, the guy that works at the theater, Mason, he told me about. It. He says pretty good. Yeah, I heard it's like. And I was like, oh, three and hours. I, I kind of forgot about it. He's like, oh yeah, that fucking movie. Like I saw a trailer for it, and then like, Gosling drives again. Yeah. Yeah. I do, yeah, there's it's it's a bummer how quickly movies go in and out of the but theaters. That, but respect that postman though. That movie though is like a full on four out of four movie though. Just like and they don't even make movies like that big yeah. scale anymore. It's just like in a sense like I hate the word epic because it kind of been tarnished in recent years. Mm-hmm. But that that movie describes that like ginormous like adventurous epic field movie. This like huge production. Yeah. But like all for good, you know. I love the part when he kills the one like douchey guy who is just kind of. Like, like the dumbass who's just like, oh, like you know, he's like, there's he, they try to make you feel sorry for him at the last minute right before he dies. Like fuck him, I don't care. There's like the guy who's like last and look, like too slow to keep up, too slow to eat or whatever. That guy, yeah. just, I work hard. <laughs> well, kind of like the whole thing of the postman is like it's like the fact that it's like what happens though, like when the world starts to go to like hell, like these people that have like meaningless kind of jobs, like what are the, what, what's like that the, they're really made for? Yeah, like yeah. but there's no war, there's no survival, so these people just kind of work their kind of crappy jobs. You know, like, you know, guy I'm talking about. Though? Yeah, the, the, one the, guy, the main bad guy. Not the main bad guy. There's the guy who's the he's the little uh, he's the little like henchman. Who goes after him? And says, I want to do it. I want to. I'm a part of something. Remember that guy? He's oh yeah, little... that guy who like Kevin Costner was like because when they kill like his donkey, he's like here you can have my it's food. Good, it's good. He's like it's good. He's good. And then that guy just turns to be like, like fucks him over. Like you know, he, like Kevin Costner's kind of helping this guy. Like whatever, this guy's a douche, but I'll fucking help him. Yeah, that guy. I was so yeah. glad when that guy died. I know. That's like all the best parts. I was like, put it up, re- replay it, replay yeah, it. He just stabs guy. him. You know. Yeah. <laughs> he just run at him. He's like, he's so sweaty. Come back, come back for that one black guy that was just like you know like. Like, right in the last thing, he's like, fuck it, I should just go up Kevin Costner, then he gets killed. Yeah. And he had, he had the line, like, no saddle on my back. He turns around, like, stabs the guy or something, or shoots him. Or he did something like that to him. I think he throws a knife at the guy with the gun, and he's chasing down Kevin Costner, so he can escape. Yeah, yeah. But that movie's so, it's just one of those movies so mm-hmm. good. It's, it's, one of those, like, it's like three hours, but you never even notice it. Like, yeah, it's, like, it's, it's one of those you don't notice how long it is. And then it's got Tom Petty in it, too. That, that, that was, like, the number one thing I remembered from a kid. I was like, oh my god, there's Tom Petty in this movie. <laughs> When they're having a party, aren't they like doing like a bluegrass version of like Eric Clapton "Wonderful Tonight"? You look wonderful tonight. I don't Have you that's, heard? It's not that song, but like that's kind of how the music is. It's like it's kind of like classic rock music, but like in like bluegrass. folk kind of like yeah. style. Have you heard the bluegrass version of "Crazy Train"? 
Yeah. Oh my god, I love it. You would love this thing, Spencer. It's really interesting. Is it made by the- it's the only way I ever learned the lyrics to Crazy Train, actually. Really sadly, it's the only way I've actually Is it learned. made by like the, the, the... Modest Mouse, I think, is what they're called. Modest oh, Mouse? No, like Iron Horse. It was oh, Iron, Iron Horse. Okay. That's the I, I, I have actually Metallica. one. I have one of the, yeah. their albums, and they did, a bunch, they did a bunch of Metallica songs. They have Iron, Iron Maiden one, too, I think. Don't yeah, they? I yeah, think... they, that's, that's what they're called, Iron Horse. They... Which is kind of like, nowadays, that's kind of a smart thing to do, is like... Okay, people have read so much music anyways. I mean, if you want to try to go out there and make your stamp, be my guest. But here's but here's a better idea. Why don't you take music that people already like, but put and it in a completely different... And already been making millions and millions And then put it in a completely different genre. Yeah, mm-hmm. and yeah, put a twist on it. So, Iron Horse... Cheese. Yeah, and Iron Horse did Crazy Train. They did a bluegrass version of Crazy huh. Train. Look it up. It is, like, it's really good. Like, it's... <laughs> this is how I know it's a good song. Is It's a song that was an Ozzy Osbourne song, and my mother will listen to it now. My mom hates anything to do with Ozzy Osbourne. And it's like, the first time me and my brother were like, oh, well, we want you to listen to Crazy Train. My mom goes, fuck no. She goes, I hate Ozzy. No. And he goes, no, it's not Ozzy. And puts it on. And the first thing you hear is the banjo strike up. And and the banjo starts playing the whole thing. And it's and it's this, it's just this little dude with a total twang. And he's, you know, Yeah, the guy's crazy. voice is just like very, yeah, like, and he's, it is a total, like, total twang. And yeah, he does, you know, crazy. Right, and it cracks me up. And it's so, goes. Yeah, well, it's really like the Metallica one. It was just like, like you gotta like, I was like, I'm like, I gotta see what fuel sounds like. It's like, give me fuel, give me five. Yeah, and it's, but it's, it's, you just can't help but like put a smile on your face when you hear this exactly, music. Exactly, and that's kind of how this is. I make ACDC the, bearable for me. It's like I'm kind of like I kind of want to write Iron Horse and be like, hey, you should maybe redo some of the Guns N' Roses ones. <laughs> Because I don't mind Maybe Axel's mi- songs. I just can't stand Axel's voice after a while. Try That's a little Billy and Billy. See what comes out of that. Yeah, like there's some <laughs> that I like want to email, like trying to get a hold of these people. There probably like, so many emails from like people. Like, do this album, do oh, this okay. album. Yeah, try Mark, this one, try, try that one. Marky Mark, like feel it, feel it, like, feel it, feel it. <laughs> 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 oh, come on, God. come on. <laughs> Marky Mark just barely accepted the fact that he was Marky Mark. I doubt he's going to let anybody redo any of his music anytime soon. <laughs> He, like, he really has. Mark That's because he's become, like, such he's a super actor, actor he's though. Yeah, actor. and it's like he's just now accepting the fact that he made most of his money by dropping trow in high schools. <laughs> That's what you did, dude. You walked around and mm-hmm. worked for Calvin Klein, and you walked around in your underwear. Mm-hmm. And you'd go places and drop trow in your underwear and work out to a video. Well, that's like in Boogie Nights. When he was hired for that, he, 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 he asked Paul Thomas Anderson, he was like, you, you didn't hire me because I dropped my pants, right? That that wasn't the reason. <laughs> no, he was hired, though, because he was good-looking, and then it just so happened to be that he turned out to be a really it's fucking strange, good he actor. He turned out to be, like, a super actor. He's one of my favorite yeah. actors. I know I call him Marky Mark, and I know he doesn't like that. I totally call him Marky Mark. If I ever met him in real life, I, I Well, I, I just feel like that, that to me... Uh, I think that's a cool enough name because like Mark Wahlberg just sounds kind of generic, but Marky Mark, you're like who? Yeah, I'm a, I think if I, know I he ever, sounds like he's five years old too at the same time. But yeah, I, I think if I ever actually met him in real life, I would, life, call him I, would I would I have probably to call would him accidentally. Marky Mark. I would Wouldn't have to call him it? Marky Mark and then go, "I'm sorry, I understand that your name is Mark Wahlberg, but I am a child of the '90s. You have to understand that to me, you are." My education Mark. not so good. <laughs> you have to understand to me, you are Marky Mark. Like you're the first guy that all of the girls in my generation went. Ew. It was Marky Mark. Like he's like feel it, feel it. Yeah, that, yeah, the feel it. Uh. No, <laughs> One of the but, greatest uh, music videos I've ever seen in my life. No, but uh, the thing with him, I'm, I'm almost just afraid because like the. Uh, because I'm where I'm going, I kind of want to write screenplays and whatnot. So my friend would have reached that point. I'm gonna be blacklisted before I have a chance to do anything. So he's like, I heard that fucking podcast done again. You know? <laughs> he called so. me Marky Mark and made fun of me for dropping trap. No, but you I love that dude. I think he's a really, I think he's a really good actor, and I like him a lot. Yeah, and the he mar- totally is. It's just, it was kind of a bummer that it's taken him this long to accept the fact that that's where he came well, from. Well, you almost, sometimes you just gotta kind of accept and be like, it'd be cool with it because that's like, yeah. that's the only way. Because if you're not cool with it, then then then. People started doing it worse. We're yeah, like, I was saying because that was the only time that I did not like Mark Wahlberg was when people were pushing the whole Marky Mark thing on him, and he was getting like openly defensive in public. Like there were videos, and there's like videos I'm sure you can find them of him like getting mad at reporters and yelling at reporters and like, "Don't ask me anything about it." Like wanted nothing to do with it. And now it's like he's a little better and he'll yeah. joke about it. But it's like when he was going through that point in time where he almost wanted to deny the fact that it ever even happened. Yeah, I'm like, oh come on, accept the fact that you did it. Debbie Gibson accepted the fact that her entire career was based off dancing in a mall. Yeah. <laughs> so, somebody I actually feel kind of bad for is, um, I never really thought of this, 
but Matt Damon because he oh, said he... because I actually saw some like there's like a, a there's a there's a, re, there's a like premiere he went to some uh, premiere to one of his movies in England and I think it was a more recent movie I think it was like Green Zone or something okay. there, this wasn't like a real interview or anything this was just like people with camera phones in his face mm-hmm. and Matt Damon's nice I'm like hey guys he's like signing autographs hey you gonna enjoy the movie that's awesome all right yeah you know just being really nice and one guy's like Matt Damon and he just like. He's just like I, 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 I I'm not, I'm not just drops his head. Just, he just yeah. kind of like he stops, kind of like bites his lip, and just says, "All right, guys." He just kind of brushes it off, smiles, fish sign. He's like Matt Damon, Matt Damon. He's like one guy's doing it. He's like, "Okay, guys," just he's not looking at the guy. Just signs, just walks off. Just like poor Matt Damon. He it's probably like, has to that, get that, that so that much. That Team America thing is gonna like haunt him to the day he dies. Yeah. <laughs> Like yeah. he's just in his hospital bed dying. Somebody got was by some old guy to, in like a in a rascal like in a automatic space wheelchair. rascal. Spa- uh, uh, those like space wheelchair goes by Matt Damon. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh god, that poor guy. Yeah. Because that's one of the things like that. It's the small things like that will just like never live you down. Yeah. Like Dave Chappelle had a joke. He's all saying like, I'll be honest. I feel, I make fun of a lot of people. I was like, fuck it. It's a tough world. It's, I'm just joking around. Get over it. One person I feel a little Jimmy bad for, Lil Wayne. I ruined that guy's life. <laughs> he, he came up to me, he says, I got people walking up to me every day saying, what? Okay. <laughs> Ever since your fucking skit. He did that to himself. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> but those guys, those are the ones that, yeah, I can't Well, for, some, for someone who like me that doesn't listen to a lot of more like recent hip hop and rap. It's like, that's oh, you I know. Learned. Yeah. yeah and, well, and, and it was one of those things, I was the same way. I was like, oh, I bet if I listened to his music, it would be different. No, it's not. That's the whole thing, is I gave him the benefit of the doubt. I tried to listen to it, and when 95% of all the songs on one CD at some point go, yeah, what? You're like, okay, you're just a fucking idiot. Like, I don't want to hear you. I gave him the benefit of the doubt. I tried. No, Lil Wayne, Maybe you it's do just not one do- song he does that in. But yeah, it's like, if he did that in, like, yeah, just the one song they got famous for with it, that would have been fine. But no, he literally does it in anything he does, so. But he doesn't Mark do it anymore. Around. Yeah, now he doesn't do it. Notice now he doesn't do it anymore. Sits in the pushing closet him as an, alone. Pushing him as an artist. No, like a block of dry eyes. <laughs> no, it's because I'm sure he got just as annoyed as the rest of us in the world. <laughs> that comes so back weird. around though. It's kind of like even though I, even though I like Guns N' Roses, I'm not like a hugest fan of them. I'm more like the band. Axel's decent to me, but it's not like the Axel and Roses, but the Guns N' Roses. The Roses, yeah. that's much the Axel. <laughs> I like the Guns, not necessarily the Rose. Yeah, I like yeah. I like the Guns just fine. It's the Rose that makes it. Eh. And, it and it's the you know it's because every song he has the part. Yeah. Wah. Well, that you could be mine. Yeah, on the yeah. You know, he has that lingering. Yeah, he has that lingering. I've done too many drugs in my life. Yeah. <laughs> actually, Axl Rose Strange wasn't the guy who did tons of drugs, though. He, yeah, he actually wasn't that guy. Because in, like, Slash's book, he said he, he did, like, the he did like less drugs, less drinking than, like, everybody else. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was gonna say the English guys, the all the English, the old English rockers. I guess Duff McKagan did a lot, probably. That. Yeah, Duff McKagan did. That's why, like, he like talks. Kind Slash of did. Well, yeah, Slash, Slash? Like Slash pulled out of it. A lot of those guys could have come back. That's the like, thing that's Steven amazing to like... me about Slash is like, I mean, granted, yeah, I've never actually seen him without his glasses on, so there might like his eyes might hold the truth. But other than that, well, you, he's you, you, a really good looking dude considering where the fuck he came from and what the hell he's gone through. Well, you listen like gla- Duff. That's why like, I'm like, I'm wondering if maybe he takes off his glasses, his eyes are like a million years old. Like just all the age, age. is right here. Because you don't see it in his hair. You he's do ripped. not see he's it in his chin. body. Mm-hmm. You do not see it in his chin. You do not see it anywhere. So I'm like, I'm like, do you take off your glasses? It's like, if you took it's off like his... Dorian and he's just so fucking old if he takes off his glasses or something. If, you, if he takes off his glasses, is probably just another pair of glasses. Right? That's I'm just like, I'm like, I kind of want to know what he looks like without the glasses on because he is looking... Well, he has... You can still see pictures of him without the glasses. It's, he doesn't, he's not know, always wearing I, the glasses. You have his autobiography, right? Yeah. Okay, mm-hmm. that's where I, I should... That's how I want to borrow that. Well, yeah. Well, you can also see... Just at a, I've seen a lot of pictures like in magazines still where he doesn't have his glasses on. Where it's I like, see. I've never seen a picture But then I saw like, those pictures like it's, it's a personal interview because, you know, kind of like in the corner, leaned up, like all these like kind of like, you know, he's having fun with life. You know, Slash, he's not drinking. He's playing. I like his solo album he did where he had like he has two or three out by this point but the first one it was like he brought on like different lead singers from different bands to sing with him mm-hmm. yeah. there's like two there's like two or three he had like Fergie and the dude from gotcha. like yeah, the Fergie song. I, I don't. This is like yeah. This. Fergie, that's just. She, he had the dude from. She Fer- was a hot fucking mess. There's another hot fucking mess in Hollywood. Fer- there's like Fergie, and there's like the, I guess the guy from Maroon Five. Ooh, most- Adam. 
Yeah, I guess so that guy. Adam Levine? Oh my god. <laughs> I guess it's that guy, but, um... <laughs> He's, okay, I, his, his voice when he sings is not the greatest. It's what he sings about and how he sings it. Is what I just I got a Maroon 5 fan, I guess. About but... him. I loved Maroon 5's very first album, mostly because the entire thing was nothing but sexually charged energy, and everything after that has been commercialized, and it pisses me off. It's like, if you go. listen to the very first Maroon 5 album, mm-hmm. the one that came that, that made them, like, super big and famous when we were all in, like, 7th grade, 8th grade. Is that the one where it has, like, a chick holding, like, a, a naked chick holding a box, like, a drawing, and her hair yeah, is really Yeah, and the hair is all... And... Place. Place. If you listen to the songs that are in that, they every single one of them is a song about sex. Is that the song? This love has yeah. taken its toll on me. That's, That's the one. And it's if you listen to all of the songs on that album, that entire album is nothing but sexually charged energy. That's I it. It, it is a sex CD. Hmm. But when you listen to the lyrics of it, it's funny because one of my most Christian friends bought that album. And loved yeah, it. <laughs> it, exactly. You Christians to, mostly like those kind of things because they don't know. They don't know because the lyrics in it. They was, know, but they don't know. Like in the in the back of their mind, they're saying like, "I like this for some reason." But, they know. They, uh, but the, back the front of their mind's mind, like, you know, oh, it's you know, you know, it's th- good th- Christian fun. Yeah. Uh, Maroon Five, good Christian fun. Yeah, but like when you listen to the lyrics of it, it was like the lyrics were really well done to hide that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And then the last couple albums I've heard of theirs, or like the last couple songs I've heard of theirs that came out in the last couple years, makes me really sad because they're shit. I'm sorry, they're commercialized shit. It is not the same band that came out with the first album. Well, the other song, all. the other songs that are on this, though, like, has like it has like uh, M Shadows from Avenged Sevenfolds <gasps> on there. It's my husband, Chris Cornell. M Shadows, if you hear Iggy this, Pop. Come Iggy me. Pop. You know, this, this is a slash album. Just for surprise. This is not the Bruce Five album. I think of every time I think of Iggy Chris Pop Corn- is the silver gloves and this. The, in the in the. <laughs> it was the tight jeans, the silver gloves, and this. Or him it's just kind of leaning. Yeah, and that, that leaning. stretch that he would do because he was so fucking skinny. Uh, Iggy, Iggy I love Iggy Pop. I love Iggy, Iggy Pop. Pop. They have Ozzy skinny. Osbourne. The guy from Wolf Mother. Yeah. Okay. Stockdale. Dude from Buck Cherry. You know. Oh, so. I love him. So they got. He's so, got a hot wife. Uh, I don't. Who, I imagine so. People have money. Have usually, hot wives. yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> well, <laughs> People that have money. His, his wife is a model. And <laughs> I remember seeing. Well, it it's in not like they go like pick up some like forty year old like she trash. Got Rite Aid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, no, that's. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in Maroon Five. What can I say? Well, no, like, he's in a Buck Cherry. Yeah, Maroon Five, yeah, Buck Cherry. Guy guy too. Too. Okay, too. Well, no, it was cracking me up. I remember watching an interview with him, and he was talking about when he like first met his wife. Uh-huh. And his current wife, the mother of his children, is a model. She was a supermodel, and she was a blonde-haired, big boob model when he first met her. And he met her because one of her friends brought her to their show, like uh-huh. to the Buck Cherry show. And he was all performing, you know, all this stuff. Met her backstage, didn't think anything of it. It was just acting like himself, a total nerd. And then that guy's a nerd. Oh, horribly. Buck Cherry. Yeah, the absolute nerd. He's socially awkward, like most all of them. Oh. Yeah, he like his, his whole song's like, "You fuck so good, but I'm on top." Of it. <laughs> I, I love, mostly always feel like I love people, crazy it's, bitch. It's, like, most of those guys, the, most of those guys, though, it's like you meet them outside of being on a concert and they're fucking awkward. Like, they're socially awkward. I think and it's like English people that can handle it very well for yeah, some reason. It, so, so. Yeah, it really is. It's like the only the English can do it right. It seems like American rockers, the minute you get it backstage, and just, Hi! yeah, they turn into like the dumb 14 year old and I guess that's what happened to him is he met his, he met her and he thought she was like this hot, gorgeous model, but he's like, I was tripping all over my words. I felt like an idiot. And then he did this little thing where he was talking about the very first time he ever met her dad. Mm-hmm. He showed up in long sleeves and a turtleneck to cover all his tattoos. To cover all his tattoos because he was so afraid <laughs> to meet her father and so afraid of what he would think if he like seeing the tattoos. And he goes, he's like, you know, buttoned up sleeves and everything, and all the way up. And the dad goes, you look really warm. And he finally showed him that he was tattooed, and the dad goes, oh, why did you cover that up? <laughs> <laughs> so this poor guy like stressed himself out so bad. But it was one of the funniest interviews that I've ever seen because it was him. They did a bunch of other rockers. They didn't do M Shadows. That's because he's not married, I don't think, still, which would be nice. I hope not. <laughs> didn't Avenged Sevenfold just put out a new album? I don't know. Not yet. Well, at least they're not getting yet. close to it. Though. I know. I was going to say, I heard they were getting close to one. I, I don't they know. They put out a new single, at least. Ooh. Yeah, they put out a couple singles in the last, like. I just want to find M Shadows and meet him in real life because he's fucking gorgeous. <gasps> What's his, Sorry. his real name? Is Matthew Sullivan? Matthew. Or yeah. Something? Matthew Sullivan, something like that. Yes. Yeah. Oh, Jimmy the Rev Sullivan. That, that was Sullivan. No, that's Matthews. Sullivan. Matt, it's Matt. Matt. Shadows. Sanders. 
Sanders. Matt Sanders. I think that's what it is. I thought he legally changed it to Matthew Shadows. Well, he probably is now, but I mean, like, yeah, I he thought... wasn't born <laughs> Mr. Shadows. No, I know he wasn't born Matthew Shadows, but <laughs> I... Mr. Shadows, get in here now! Did you make this mess? <laughs> that would be a sweet fucking lame, though. I'd, Mr. I'd, Shadow? I'd, yeah. Why not? Yeah. I'd totally name my kid Shadow. Just like Shadow. some five-year-old kid comes in, oh, I spilled the mail, I'll leave my wife a lot. Shadow! <laughs> You're a disgrace to the Shadow family. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess somebody told me he grew up in Mariposa. Really? Yeah. Mariposa? Yeah. You never mentioned... No, they all grew up in L.A. Okay, that's I, what I thought. That's I what watched I thought. Their, I watched their, their homemade biography That's thing. what I thought. Because when somebody told me that he was from Mariposa, I was like, horse shit. No, Nothing that all, good. They looking. all came from, like, Long Beach. Yeah, or, that's what I thought, is they were from Ham, Southern California. Yeah, kind of Long Beach. Speaking of people coming from places Beach, and, and where they're is. at right now, uh, George Lucas, apparently, right now, or earlier today... The Modesto parade is coming was going on, and Cisco sent me a text saying George Lucas is in the Modesto. Yeah, parade. he said that. He's like, he's like, he's like, he's like, you want to come on? He says, I was wondering if you guys want to go down. I'm like, here's the thing: you're gonna see George Lucas for all of like five to ten seconds as he passes by. Yeah. There should be a thousand billion people there that I don't want to deal with. There's and like, it's no Modesto. parking. It's Modesto. It's gonna be fucking 110 <laughs> degrees. It's Modesto. It's not yeah. where I mean, it's like I feel like there'll be better times in life to see George Lucas. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, I think it's a place to wrap it all up at. So till next time. I'm Spencer Scott Holmes. I'm Ryan Dunnigan. And I'm Nora. Find all our stuff at oldmanorange.com. Yep, oldmanorange.com. That's the place to find all the cool shit we got. Okay, <laughs> till then. <laughs>